figure out how to start this. And that's as good as anything. As long as I'm talking, we have started. Uh, everyone, everyone hates Drake. Thoughts? I agree. What am I supposed to say to that? <laughs> what I, I'm supposed to be the lone... <laughs> The lone Drake. Well, actually, he's not that bad a guy. <laughs> you guys got to uh, gotta hear him out. What's, Listen to the man. What's a bloke like 21 Savage supposed to do? Torn between two uh, two friends, two pals. He's, he stayed his ass on the sideline, at least for part one. We, there's another album coming, um, so we don't know. <laughs> they might hate him much more. Like this is just like the warm up. It's like no, we do not like this. Guy. Like to his to his core, he is rotten, and we're gonna fourteen tracks, fifty eight minutes go through it. They brought the deceased into this. They said, "Listen, I didn't ask him personally. I feel like Prodigy probably also hated you. I, if I had to gander a guess, he also hated your fucking guts." They said that with the the Prodigy estate. Uh, wife children all they're like no no he wouldn't have went for that shit at all yes yes we consent to this that was that i think that was my biggest takeaway from the album how much i've been underrating how much of a hater prodigy was i mean that those didn't all sound like snippets from the same interview that sounded like years of hating i just want to hear the hundred list because i feel like like people say i got a hundred corny or whack rappers i feel like prodigy's like y'all not going okay Number one, and it just starts like 76, <laughs> 77. He's just naming every rapper he's ever heard. He's like, I'm only in the D's now. So I could easily do 150, 200. I was going to uh, say, what are your general takeaways from, because I've got a take. I don't, it may be a hot take. No, I you, no, hit, you know, you go. I want to hear the tape. Don't piss me off. I think it's Future's best album. Now, I want to say, I want to stress album. Album. Studio album. Not uh, something that was on uh, a hard drive in, in Arabia for, for 56 nights. <laughs> a full album. Studio album. All that. I think that's his best studio album. I don't know if I can get there yet. But also, I can't decide. Like, I've just... He drops him back to back, and I generally like the last project more. Like Monster Beast Mode 56 Nights was a three month span, which is ridiculous to think about. My favorite's the last one. Purple Rain and Evil were like back to back months. Future and Hendrix were back to back weeks. Yeah. So I've learned I can't I can't judge this. I don't know how I feel about this one. I just I just sit like this the entire time. <laughs> Until the next the next track. So I because I, I don't know how I feel. Yet, I guess a stupid question. I don't know if it's a stupid question. How do we know for sure? Like, what did I miss on the intro where we know that Future is dissing Drake? I think Kendrick kind of made it cl did all but saying Drake. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ken yeah, Kenny is not much for the. Uh, I don't know who you tell me who was it about? I don't know. Uh, I get that side. Sure. On the like, how do we? Are we, I think, what did I what did I miss? I'm willing to I know I missed something. I think it's the and this is where I wish we were both 14 again because I would know all of the details. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I was like, I'm just too old. But here, let me say this. We might be the everybody here is 35. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is the funniest part by the, far. The median age of this of this brouhaha of the boys being chatty. 36 would probably yeah. be my guess of everybody involved here. Think about the messiest bitch you know. It's a 36 year old man, ain't it? What did what and here? I mean, I'm I'm fucking myself. What did Game say when he was dissing Jay Z? He was like, "You 30, 38, and you're still rapping." Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. Uh, <laughs> here are these here are these gentlemen are. Is Kendrick the youngest? He's, I don't even know. I have no He's, idea how old Kendrick or Lamar Cole, is. I don't know how old Cole is either, to be honest. Probably one of those two. Uh, well, that's because he keeps still rapping about the, his high school problems. So that's <laughs> it's hard to hard to nail him down. I, to me, from what I've gathered, Metro tweeted about uh, being snubbed for a Grammy. Either last Grammys, not like the okay. last month, but like the year before or two years ago. 
Um, and Drake mocked him for that. So Metro's been uh, saying fuck Drake pretty consistently since then. Everybody here is, again, 30 plus years of age. Correct. Just... And and since then, there's been a little bit like Bill Simmons, if you don't know why two people hate each other, it's probably over a woman, uh, has, has unfolded since then, uh, which doesn't sound like a, a Drake at all. Uh, but... <laughs> Or future, yeah, or met, yeah. like none of these guys. Just well, new that's what board, I do. Uh... I don't think. I, I think future is just like I ride with Metro. I don't think he because to your point, I don't know that he said anything implicitly about Drake. But Metro is very clearly like, hey, this is my team. This is my side of the Civil War. Anyone on this, dead or alive, is with me. Who the fuck do you have? I think the funniest thing, the first time I noticed it was, uh, I can't remember which Jay-Z album. I think it was 444, but the intro, like the samples are also dissing the person Correct. that the rapper is dissing. <laughs> Yeah, Metro's like, nah, nah, let me get some of that. Smiling faces. <laughs> like, yeah, fuck it, fuck Drake. <laughs> Hit that button again, yeah. Well, that was like the same after Kendrick's verse, and then Future comes in like, I don't even know what he just was talking about. I've got my own song going over here. And then Metro's just like, do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do for like a minute and a half. <laughs> They showed, they talked to, I think it was uh, Rodney O, who originally produced that song a bit. He's like, like Metro called, like, he, we'd been in touch. He's like, he's a big fan. So he, like, let me know what he was going to do. And I was thinking, I was like, I don't know if Rodney O knew he was going to do all that. <laughs> he's like, hey, man, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to chop it up real quick, man. You, you won't even notice, for real. He was in his bag. That's where I don't know when Kendrick's verse came in, because Future... I, I saw a clip on Instagram, like the week leading up to the album, where it was Future, Travis Scott, and Metro were all on stage. And Travis Scott was like, play that dun na dun na song. And he was like begging him. It was very cute. He was begging him to play it. Finally, Metro was like, fine, we'll do it. And that beat kicks in, and Future raps. None of the words that made the album version, which leads me to believe there's either a part two coming with the other fucking guy who really hates Drake, Pusha T, on the same beat on the next <laughs> album, or it was a completely different song at first. They ripped Future's original verse. I mean, Future's still in the booth right now rapping over that beat. Metro had to cut him off. He said, the album is due, my friend. I have to, I have to go. You can have a blast in there. He said, I still got to get busy. I got to get my did it diz off too, man. So rep this. <laughs> the original Future Verse, and they only, probably like six bars made it on the, the Instagram reel I saw. Better than any of the six he put on the album. And everything he said on the album, I also like. So apparently that's just a beat made for Future. I know it was made for many other people many years ago. And nobody... Nobody has ripped that beat apart as much as Lil Wayne did 15 years, 17 years ago at this point. 26 now is 18 uh, anniversaries of that per year. <laughs> I'll say whether it's on the album or it's official or not, Pusha T might get on every single one of these beats. Like, I just rock with what y'all got going on here, man. I'm just, <laughs> it is fake written all over him. It is hate written all over him. <laughs> Smiling face. Nah, Metro was cutting up, man. <laughs> yeah, like you said, I, I do stop and laugh sometimes because they are, like, pretending to be your friend is, like, the least hard you could put a diss at this, <laughs> this caliber of rapping. Smiling faces. Sometimes they're not really that smiley. <laughs> Metro's like, yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. Suck on those apples, uh, fuck face. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you think had a better showing overall on this album, Future or Metro? Because I, I kind of lean Metro. He was he was going crazy the whole seventeen. He what? It's hard to say because on a couple of them, I I have enough information to believe they tanked the first half for a beat switch to make the. Like the uh, Princess Diana Diamonds Angel is an absurd song. The second half, 
I think the first they just want your head nodding a little bit so they switch. And there's another one in the early on. With the, I mean, a few uh, ice attack, but probably ice attack. Yes, I don't like the first half of that at all. I like the second half. So I think they're kind of, I think they're, they're not tanking it, but they're sandbagging a little bit. To I would agree with ice attack. I do think Magic Don Juan goes crazy unto itself. Obviously. Princess Diana. If I had, when I saw the track list, if I didn't see it from Mr. Boomin himself, and I would have thought it was AI when I saw Magic Don Juan parentheses Princess Diana. Like I was like, if you don't get the fuck out of my face with this AI track list. No, nah, Magic Don Juan featuring Princess Diana would go crazy. <laughs> nah, I would, oh, yeah. I would run that. When when I when I started thinking Metro won the album just for his future the friendly bout uh that was happening I mean, during this melee the charity match yeah, yeah was very much the the cut because that second verse too of princess diana he starts adding some shit he starts adding a, a you, you could you could feel him on the keys in the second half and then a very misplaced prodigy <laughs> Sample talking shit. Of all the stretches of the album, to put it, this was the funniest part to hear Prodigy's voice right into Cinderella, which I think might be the best overall song on the goddamn album. Cinderella is a banger as well. Goes crazy. People, all right, which leads me to this question. The only complaint I've seen from people is the no-name track list, the hidden features. How do you feel overall about hidden features? Because I saw a lot of people very angry at surprise Travis Scott. You be surprised. You knew he was gonna be there. He on everybody album, especially Metro. You knew he was gonna be. I'll say he's, I guess, partially on another earlier song, and I was like, oh man, here we go. Yeah, but it was the, just uh, pipe shit. Yes, and I was like, oh man, but then he didn't. So I was like, okay. And Cinderella, I, I think the, I feel like the best Travis Scott's features just sound like Travis Scott song. Like Cinderella sounds like a Travis Scott song. Agreed. And. It goes hard. I like the like. I try to listen to it with without looking at it, like the track list either way. So they're all somewhat hidden features. I was trying to figure out. I was like, who is this scratchy voice on? Uh, what was it? I think it's Cardi. A uh, type shit. Yeah. 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 Who's that? Who's this talking that? Ah, 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 what, what is this? <laughs> who is that? But outside that, the Rick Ross was a, a always a welcome surprise. The thugger was a, I guess that's my gripe. GTA needed some thugger, needed more thugger. There wasn't any on GTA, but there should have been. I saw a lot of people saying that Metro probably originally made GTA for 21. I can hear 21 on GTA. That's, I mean, there's a video for him playing one of these beats from like 2021. He's probably, every single person here has heard all these beats and was like, yeah, now nah, we're going to make a banger to this one. Did you make any cuts? I made three. Oh, wow. Uh, if I, I haven't made any cuts yet, if I were to make one immediately, it would be the bonus track. Future likes to do that every once in a while. <laughs> See you later, pal. Listen, even Thug <laughs> hearing that was like, hey, come on, man. I appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not my twin. That one went real quick. Yeah. Uh, Running out of time went quick. Wow. That's, yeah, I'm not a fan. Claustrophobic, that went. Not a fan of that one. One that might go, I'm not the uh, fried. Yeah. I keep hearing people say that's going to be like the summer. Like, that's going to be on everybody Instagram story. So I'm trying to decide how I feel about it. But I, as of now, I don't love it. It hasn't been cut. The other three I've cut. I'll, I'll probably never hear them again. I think claustrophobic, it's just like, it, it's number four after three fucking home runs and then he hit a double i think that's if it came anywhere else on Fair. the album i don't think it would have because i thought that too when i first heard it it kind of i think overall the sequencing on this album's pretty strong i think that one that early it was just like all right this he was on such a he smoked the first three so hard this one just mm -hmm. it felt like it was almost from a different project you know what i mean like you were saying it, yeah like it's, it it's not like bad a, it just doesn't fit right so I like that. That one doesn't bother me. I also think Slimed In after like that. I, it, to me, it was more like hmm. where where it makes sense is he was just like, yeah, Kendrick really just said, go fuck yourself. 
by the way, Thug's on our side too. He can't talk right now, but he's on our side. I want you to know which yeah, side he's on. There. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I don't think it, I think that makes more sense next to like fried. Um, Mm. Running out of time. I thought you would have liked running out of time. That kind of surprises me. No, uh, I couldn't get with it. What about Ain't No Love? I'm, I can't place it in my head, but the rest I kept. Like I, it's, I think my okay. final is 14 and I think 52 minutes. I was like, this is perfect for me. Yeah. Uh, it would probably be... I probably would end it with seeing it all. I would cut the last two. What the fuck you mean and, and where my twin at? I, I don't know that I need either of those. I don't... Twin can go... The other one, yeah, it's it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's good enough. I kept it, but like the We Don't Trust You, the Princess Diana Diamonds, like that. I will say people are already talking about hearing um, type shit like out and about in the club, and it's like, man, making a diss track also a banger. That's that's Drake's <laughs> move. They, they did a me on me. That's usually my play. <laughs> Yeah, I, I liked how I saw someone say Future Future and Metro were in in the studio making like that. And they were like, you know who else really doesn't fuck with that guy? Uh, and they just called Kendrick. They were like, hey, listen to what we're doing. He was like, I've, I've already got it recorded. It's sent. So I've sent it right now. Is that Kendrick at the door? I'm here already. <laughs> Baby Keem drove me. That's another knock. This album could have used some Keem. If we talking about real lyricists, if we talking about getting back to that that essence, that sweet science, <laughs> Baby Keem should have been. I saw somebody OVO adjacent said something about this, and they were like, "You need to go with Baby Keem." Someone quote tweeted it and said, "Leave radio out of this." And I said, "That's too far. That's too far." <laughs> that man got too many hits. People be acting like this. Oh, what if Keem? What if the whole second future Keem produced by Metro? So that's the other part. I don't know that I've officially seen anywhere that there's an entire second album. Has Metro himself said that? Or is he just, is the bonus edition coming on whenever the date is, the next part, part comes? Yeah, I've only ever seen like the two dates tweeted. So I, maybe I, I ran with the one I wanted to run with. We're getting two full length new projects. Well, that's what everyone ran with. Everyone ran with yeah. that. But I don't know that Metro ever said that. Well, he owes us one. So he should, he should groove us one right down the middle. The weekend not giving a verse, but he's just like, I just want everyone to know I'm here. I just, I just want to moan eerily in the background of this song. He's like, no, I don't like him. He's like, I don't trust him much either. Mm -mm. I got stories from up uh, when we lived in the hat together. But I'll just hum for now. Ice Attack, It's it might be my favorite type of beat, obviously after the switch. Uh, he's done it a couple of times over a couple of projects where it sounds like they've just sampled like a water level from like Donkey Kong 64. Like it very much has mm -hmm. those like N64... Whoever, whoever was producing back then was deep in their bag for all of those. But uh, the Ice Attack second half very much feels like a timed underwater Donkey Kong level. Like, hey, you got to get to it. Like, we're, the, the clock is ticking, baby. There's another one. It's middle-ish. Well, I was like, this just sounded like a Zaytoven track. A couple of them sounded like Zaytoven. Yeah, it oh, sounded, this sounded like, like exactly like Zaytoven. There sounded like there were a bunch of nods to, to like trap music as a whole, Zaytoven as a whole, people Futures worked with as Orchestra. a whole. Orchestra. Yeah. yeah, even Futures' first verse on like that, like where you say it doesn't sound like he's dissing Drake. I don't necessarily disagree, but that whole verse sounds like Wayne references because obviously Wayne's rapped that track before. He says he, he straight up says ball like we won a championship game. And then he says a couple of other things that were Wayne bars that he kind of twisted into his own. I don't know like if that's Jay -Z. intentional. Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't, I don't know if it was intentional or future. It was just like, sounds good to me. Uh, but he was like, I don't want to waste my good. Everybody going to be listening to just Kendrick part anyway. I'm not going to not running my good stuff. I just like the what's the intro. Called? Is it just called We Don't Trust You? The intro yes. track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get it. But he's, like the, the pillow talking and all that. I was like, hey, man. Be a lot of folks pillow talking. How you know that's Dre? Like, I'm just playing the numbers here. 
Not that not saying that Drake's not a pillow talker. I could I definitely buy that. But for sure. Are we pinning this on one when there are multiple? Like what if he he fired a shot across ten people's uh, face right now with that pillow talking allegation? <laughs> I did see uh, much like when Kendrick disses people, there's ever since control, which I I still never thought is a, a diss as much as like everyone's a little too comfortable here. Let's let's step the competition up. Um, I was wondering who was going to insert themselves that had no business doing it, and of course it was uh, Y and W Melly who heard that Melly <laughs> Mel bar and was like, oh, you got some shots for the Mel man, huh? And it was like, ah, oh, boy. I'm about to deliver your ass a bar. Uh, <laughs> Melly draws tomorrow. Just, what if he just ripped Kendrick to shreds? <laughs> just, what, like, just, people are like, oh, my God. Like, Kendrick ain't been battle tested because nobody will battle back. Melly's like, ah, right, a real one has entered the chat. <laughs> and Kendrick's like, God damn, he cut me yeah. up good. I'm, yeah, he didn't even understand what I meant. Now here I am, fried. Fried <laughs> good and hard. You're typically not a big Kendrick guy. What did you think overall of the verse? I think that's a misconception. I am a Kendrick guy. I didn't like Dan. Nope. That's that's the nope. one. Yeah, no. <laughs> I will I say, like you I don't like, that. you haven't historically liked him with Future. I will say that. The I'm other two times it's happened. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, what all are they... <laughs> I'll say if if they looking to uh, change their leave, I'm really trying to remember what else they've done. I Kendrick features are can be hit or miss because he'll mail some shit in too, for sure, real quick. But you know immediately, like oh, oh, good Kendrick is here. <laughs> so, I'm, do we get any bars in response out of this? Because I kind of don't think we do. I think J. Cole will drop like a Let Kendrick Down like album, uh, like a full <laughs> album being like Six man. song EP, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Drake, he'll probably say something unrelated, but related enough where his fans will be like, oh, he killed him. Kendrick's dead. And that'll be very annoying. Um, but I don't think there will be like an outright response. Like, Drake picks and chooses his battles. I think he knows damn well. I mean, this is a guy who he featured on his own album some 40 years ago. Gave him a whole track. <laughs> Far and away the best rapping on that entire album. <laughs> Kendrick's really never liked that guy at any point. <laughs> Have any of these people ever? This is when I, when did this shift? Because the whole, even when they were making music, I was like, oh. Few, it's, it's just the. Future make a tape with literally anybody. anybody. It's like, so it's like them making a tape. I don't think it necessarily mean they homeboys, but it's right. also like you hear. I feel like he had better chemistry with Juice World in some of them songs than he has with Drake. So it's like, did they not? Or maybe it is just a. It's a thing I should do as Future. Doing a tape with Drake is a good <laughs> business idea. Yeah, I mean, I think it's. I think it's one of those things that work for both sides sure. like it, it gives i remember uh, old 21 interview he was like i had never heard of drake until i became famous like we just don't play him we didn't listen to that over there over the uh, <laughs> across the pond mate <laughs> yeah a lot of stormsy uh yeah. in my house yeah some griggs yeah <laughs> but that's where it's like yeah drake does it with future because that that's the fan base he wants, you know what I mean? He's always mm -hmm. talking about battle rap and stuff. And, and that's like, he wants that credit as a lyricist. And then people with ears are like, no, we're not going to give it to you. Like you're clearly not anywhere near these other individuals. I've seen a couple make the point. Kendrick and uh, talking about, there's no big three uh, between him, J Cole and Drake. I agree. Future's got the best, catalog he's got the best run out of any of these people the the real oh, best right. is sitting right there laughing like yeah let these let these peons battle it out not my problem well, that, yeah, that's, that's like, boys. What, <laughs> yeah what, what's like what the heart the mind and the soul and future is like i'm all three little yeah. do you know i've been all three this entire time but if they're just linking and be like yeah we don't we don't we don't like that guy and i've seen it said it's like how it's gonna be hard for Drake to diss some of these people because everybody he do a track where he try to sound like you can't diss his style. You trying to sound, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't ever get into some shit with a, a Jamaican rapper. They they gonna Chet Hanks you. So then Pusha T is probably just the one waiting in the wing. 
Like he's he's just up in the rafters, like staying. Like let's just see how this plays yeah. out. Because if he says anything at all, I'm running it like Ultimate Warrior. I'm like into the ring, and I'm clearing house. Yeah, it's yeah. Like Stone when Stone Cold came into that Royal Rumble and just whooped everybody's ass. That's yeah. <laughs> that's Pusha T. But it's also like I know Pusha T and Kendrick get along based on the one song they've done together. Uh, it seems like they they kind of run uh, simpatico. At the very least, they could agree on this. They could put some... <laughs> bygones could be bygones if they had beef to sell it for for this. Push would be like, man, just any beat you have. I don't need a... I don't need a rhythm. I don't need a nothing. <laughs> All right, the hatred has been written. I'm just going to craft it around, <laughs> like, whatever. He's like, you know I what? I need to I'm... slow, yeah, wrap a I'm syllable just... around a word or sentence. I'm going to wrap my verse. You make the beat after. I'm, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I'll, I'll just say it out loud, and you can slow it up or speed it down, or like whatever you need to do. I don't I don't think Kendrick dissed J. Cole. Like, I don't know if that's like a simple take. I think he was just like, hey, you were on that song, uh, and people put you in my... I think it's more competition with J. Cole. I don't think he dis, dislikes J. Cole. That's why I don't think J. Cole's is... He's... Love and light to my brother Kendrick. <laughs> Prayer hands, dove emoji. Gospel. We're all just uh, running the same race, my brother. And that'll probably be the last time Jake. And I feel like Kendrick will be like, true, like because yeah. he I don't think he has no beef with him. No. Drake no. can't. They're already looking at the. They analyze the comments that Drake has liked. I was I like, not even that. the shit he said. I said, again, we're all thirty six. Like, what part of the game? They used to shoot up your tour bus if they didn't like you, Mick. If I didn't like you, I'd shoot up your tour bus is what well, I would do. Recently? That that wasn't even that long ago. <laughs> what <laughs> happened to the game I love? Yeah, first they banned hip drop tackles and then this. It's <laughs> it's disgusting. It's absolutely embarrassing what's happened. Yeah, I mean, uh, people still also, try to get... Uh, Michael Jackson catching a random stray on the Kendra guy. For dying. For dying. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah. <laughs> for, for kicking the bucket. Mike said, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Prince said, hell yeah. Yeah, this man's spitting, I fear. <laughs> I did outlive his ass. <laughs> oh, man. I I do wish, and I understand, to further Kendrick's point with that comparison, he's like, I'll make hits however the fuck I want. I don't need to do it based off what's popular. I don't. I am what's popular. I will dictate what's popular based on what I record and put out. I'm making classic timeless shit, not in the moment shit. Uh, and I don't know that that necessarily applies to Michael Jackson, but to the person who constantly compares himself to Michael Jackson. Yeah, I, I can see that. That's, that's a tough comp to make, especially a self comp. Right. Yeah, very much. To, 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 to Jacko. I don't, I don't think we get nothing back. Drake's going to, there'll be some type of subliminal in uh, 730. Biloxi. East Lansing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll get that soon. I people saw some. I've already said the. Uh, it's like, well, Kendrick can't do a tour like Drake. And people are like, that's objectively not true. It was literally just proven false. <laughs> I think. Was it number Was Kendrick number one of all time? If not, it's up there. It was. And then I think. For hip hop tour, grossing tour. I think Drake's has been longer, so I think he just passed him, which Drake fans were like, see? And right. <laughs> it's like, I saw someone go back to an older Drake song. I can't remember. It had to have been recent because Adonis was featured in some capacity. And they were like, he, he pre-dissed Kendrick. And they were breaking down the bars. I was like, if you don't get the fuck out of my face. It was like, depending on what you want to look at, all these people have been throwing shots back and forth for years. I just feel like Kendrick's the one's like, no, I'm, I'm sending another shot. Like I'm, I'm following up on this. Hey, big dog, have you had a chance to? Uh, I hope this finds you well. I hope this <laughs> fuck you album finds you well. Have you had a chance to? Uh, let's reconvene at a later date that is beneficial for us both. Yeah, not not many subliminals uh, from from Kung Fu Kenny. He was like, no, I'll I'll make sure everyone knows who I'm talking about and. I'm still very selfishly. I wish he would just put out not an album of disses, but an album of him just rapping like that. Like I don't, I get the artistry he's going for. It's obviously worked in his favor. Clearly, he's doing okay. Selfishly, 
I would enjoy that quite much, not very much. Yeah, but y'all ain't like Untitled, though. I said Untitled was cutting, and they said, no, no. He's just rapping. There's no flow here. I said, that's exactly <laughs> what I want from Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> that's all I'm here for. That's literally why I'm here. Yeah, nine, like, backseat freestyles where he's just going crazy. I, I'd listen to it. I just want that on Somebody's the So much wailing in the background. It sounds like the, <laughs> the saxophone. There's an ambulance going off. It sounds like the MTA. Just ah! real. Yeah, real. <laughs> oh, 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 I remember I was conflicted. I said, man, that boy about to get in his bag. <laughs> he started telling me what he about to rap about, man. I was feeling sad. Yeah, you was. <laughs> rap that shit, Kenny. It's just like me. <laughs> yes, talk that talk. It was an unbelievable album. Future being this late into his career, dropping a heater like this is unbelievable. Since 2010, 11 albums and 26 mixtapes slash EPs. So 37 projects and not 15 years. And we, myself included, we was, it was like, man, this, bro, it's been two years. Please, please. You used to give us this like every other month, man. You set these standards. And then he always delivered. Always. And I'm grateful. It's, I, I put my headphones on 1201, laying in bed. High as shit. I was grinning ear to ear. I was like, he fucking, <laughs> they all. I was like, yeah, as soon as you hit that, yeah, it killed the camera. It's back, but I thought it was comedic effect. That was crazy. Uh, <laughs> that's very genuine. Oh, no. But yeah, he he cooked, I fear. He he very much cooked. I saw some people saying that Everyday Hustle was the first miss. No, Get out of here no. with that take. It's a terrible no, take. Now, I was thinking, I want more. Soul Sample Future. That's what I want. And Rick Ross. How many parents you think Rick Ross is meeting at this age? <laughs> you know what I mean? Again, everybody here is 46. Like, I'd like you to meet somebody. The biggest boss. Renze it's Renzel. <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Your daughter's very lovely. I'm happy to be here. Meet the Rick Ross over for dinner. Yeah, the <laughs> I brought Wingstop in Bel Air. I will say, I think that was the feature that probably pissed Drake off the most. I feel like he's mm -hmm. made the most music with him out of everyone else who was involved. He's made maybe the best music. Drake and Ross got some heat together. A agreed, but that's where it was like he heard that Maybach music. He's like, <laughs> oh no, oh no, anything but this. Please be uh, like. Yeah, please be pale right. or somebody. Please not not the biggest boss. Oh, Ace Hood. Whew. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, bullet dodge, Adonis. Uh. <laughs> but no, it was in fact the biggest boss. Uh, but the beat just perfect for him. Um, there was someone else I feel like would have absolutely slaughtered that, but it escapes me, so. Nevertheless, um, yeah, I'm excited. Whatever comes, I think it's the 12th is when the next batch sounds, uh, is arriving. Is it two weeks or three weeks? Are they three weeks apart, I think? I'll go to his Twitter. I'll do it. Yeah, take the bait. That's what he wants you to do, sheep. Oh, but I, I also do love when Future just decides this is a word now, and that's Banoodles. Banoodles just being in the lexicon now. I'm with it. I, I love it. Listen, Perfect. once he said Kareem played for the Rockets, man, we he had too much power. <laughs> if we didn't stop him there, we're we're powerless against Benudo. Uh, I did see, yeah. Metro tweeted once once you pick a side, stay there. And John Morant quote tweeted it. I was like, all right, you need to <laughs> you need to not insert yourself in any beef. John Morant, like, I'm gonna get suspended to four to six of these tracks. <laughs> next season. Yes, yes. Another part of this, too, because I, I don't remember the last time. I know you were busy uh, that night, and we'll get to it. Oh, no, I guess it was technically the night before. Um, the fuck was I going to say? Oh, that, like this is like a classic album rollout mm. that we just haven't had in a while. Um, so I appreciated that. And it's hard to say it didn't work because everybody, like I don't remember the last time the whole timeline was on just tweeting about the same album like everyone listening in unison yeah it was to the point like i 
once it came out, I couldn't listen to it right at midnight. So I just quit checking the timeline. I was like, I just wanted to all be fresh because everybody was tweeting about it at one time. And I could actually see it. So uh, Musk actually let the, the bird act right for one night, it appeared. 4 12 24. And yeah, that, that's what makes me think it's just more of this album because it's it just says we don't trust you 322 and then 412. That makes me think he LeBroned it and said, hey, Let me get you three more right there. <laughs> you know what? Let me throw three more deluxe twin uh, remix. I'm like, Man, please. I don't want the original. Okay, yeah, those are if the bonus tracks sound like that, just pretend you never said that. You know, just delete the tweet. We got enough. All right, this is more than enough. I'm thrilled with what Just we got. Just drop have. the instrumentals. That's what the instrumentals. That actually might be what it is. Only the instrumentals on the 12. Get y'all's bars off. I might have to do it to these meatballs. <laughs> Every, everyone, this is Drake. He's like, who the fuck is Greg from Milwaukee? Why does he hate me? Fake written all over you. Hate written all over you. <laughs> Drake's like, damn. But you did a music last week. I did. Well, I needed that to lift my spirits. Now, Frankie Beverly, we'll farewell, uh, we'll the, <laughs> the farewell tour, El DeBarge opened for him. Then Shaka Khan, who shot respect. I said it at the show. You looked marvelous. You look. She just had a birthday. Always. Does. I think it was seventy one. Um, seventy one. So we'll probably get some dinner, uh, some bonoodles, something a little later. Uh, <laughs> bonoodles and Celine for all my ladies. And then, mm-hmm. yeah, Frankie, they got like maybe like four more shows. And I also found out like the very last stop of this tour, Whiskers might need to be in attendance because it's in New Orleans. It's the OJs, the Whispers, and Frankie Beverly and Mays. I said, man, this is like the, the leather sandals and no socks just appeared on my feet. <laughs> my hoodie turned into to white linen automatically. And my ball cap turned into one uh, without a, a team, brand, nothing. Plain Jane. <laughs> I was on big unk status. But what a delight. Yeah, that was the a- the average age of that show and this uh, beef were about the <laughs> yeah. same. Uh, yeah, 68. <laughs> I tell you, this was the... I've never been at a concert with a, a bigger average size of cellular phone. <laughs> <laughs> Text font on 26, yeah. Go, yeah. no Shaka. <laughs> iPads yeah. in the air. Cookie yeah. sheet. <laughs> oh, just holding up a dick. <laughs> but just marvelous. Just marvelous. They, the mayor came out and they gave... This was, I know you can do whatever you want when you're like the mayor. It's like, we're giving Frankie Beverly the... City decree of the keys of the stamp of the just one of those something. It was like Frankie Beverly. Yeah, everybody cheer. I don't know what that paper said. Yeah, he not from Atlanta. He not like it wasn't like they didn't name a street after him. It was just like here's you're the king of Atlanta for a day. And Frankie was like, thank you, yeah. whoever you are. And then the guy left. It was a delight, a delight all around. Pretty good. I gotta be honest, I'm still in shock. I, are all the OJs still alive? That's to me, they're such an old band. That I I don't know if they're all I don't know if anybody's still on like all original members. I think the OJs may have two. Right. I know they've got Eddie Levert. They may have like two of three, which is yeah, good okay. math for as long as they've been in the game. I think the Whispers might have like oh, yeah. three they still have twins. And as long as the twins with the crazy mustaches go, they whispers will live forever. Yeah, I'm seeing updated pictures. There's three and, and there's five uh, original mm. members formed in 58. So this is that was 74, six years ago. Like, I don't hate written all over them. Fake written all over. Mm. What if they was on? The, what if on the next tape is the OJs, the Whispers? None of them like Drake either. And the one. Yeah. And the two. Fuck Drake. <laughs> yeah. Perfect unison. <laughs> He's like, no, not, not Eddie Levert. I could live with all of them hating him, not Eddie Levert. No. He says, all over all over mm-hmm. me is a bit harsh. A little. Uh, whispering in like George Bush, sir, they don't trust you. Me? <laughs> me? <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, New Orleans and that show sounds like quite a night. I might. But the whole th- it's in May, and I was looking, I was like, the playoffs definitely aren't done by then. 
I think it's a Smoothie King Center, but I was like, are they just factoring that the Pelicans might not still be playing basketball in late May? And as listen, as of right now, the Pelicans might win it all. Shit, like the way they looking, so I, Frank might be getting rescheduled. Like Frank, can you can y'all perform at seven a.m. so we can have the the nine thirty Eastern or excuse me Western Conference Finals game three or whatever. Yeah, I mean that, that. I feel like we do get that story. I'll say once every two years. It's not an annual thing, mm-hmm. but like, huh? This team we all thought was shit actually now has a concert. Janet Jackson for the, the Hawks. Hawks. Yeah, literally last year. Yeah. <laughs> Went the night before. Glad I did. Or my shit would have been moved for I think it was Hawks Celtics, or maybe play in. It was Hawks yeah. Celtics. No, it was Hawks. I remember being like, if this, if they don't figure it the fuck out, I don't give a fuck about this concert. You should, that was the priority. <laughs> I, I agree. The Hawks, I think, won that game. And I was like, this is because of the concert. Everything had got moved around. Tatum probably tripped on a wire. Don't care for that. Uh, but yeah, I watched the Pelicans recently. Shout out Jason Tatum for the free uh, NBA uh, league pass uh, for voting for his shoes for the All-Star game. I'll take it. I was watching the Pelicans close out a team recently. And this like point Zion thing they're doing with three other, like, six, eight guys uh, running. Like, just no McCollum, no Alvarado. Uh, I think they were playing Larry Nance at the, the mm-hmm. five. And it was just like, I don't necessarily know what anyone, and I know Brandon Ingram just went down. I don't know to what severity. It wasn't as bad that, as it looked. Uh, hurt I did year. see that it's, I okay. think he, I, I don't want to speculate, but it wasn't as bad as it looked because it looked pretty bad. Yeah, I just saw my entire time. I'd be like, oh, no, Brandon Ingram's dead. And that's never a good sign. Uh, so I'm glad they were all, all the online doctors were wrong. Uh, because, yeah, that that's a closing lineup. I don't know what anyone does anything against. It's it's genuinely horrifying. Yeah, you lose. That's what you do against it. Because uh, Herb Jones, uh, again, second round pick, man. Second round pick, and now Herb Jones is just yeah, like if he don't make first team all D de- or all defense, I'll say it's positionless. So I have no idea how it's gonna like first team might just be five centers. I just don't know how they're gonna do it the first year. But an all defense team, he hitting shots. I'm in on Trey Murphy, Ingram. I just oh, yeah. looked at that he'll be like reevaluated in two weeks. So that's not okay. like not nearly as serious as it could have been. But I guess no timeline for when he's back. Zion looks great. They say he lost like 25 pounds since the end season tournament. It shows. He looks amazing. And, yeah, like Larry Nance is there to do like just enough. Like I just need to hustle, defend the rim, switch, be able to do all the stuff that those four guys can't do. But they can do a lot, so I just be – I do what I'm good at. And they cooking right now. I don't know what the – I'm going to look at the quick standings because I think – it's very matchup based for sure, but there are some matchups where it's just like you said, what do you even, how do we even pretend to guard? Like they're the five right now looking at the Clippers four. That's a lot of old guys on the Clippers <laughs> and a lot of young, active guys on the Pelicans. Well, it's, it's so much size, but it's not size at the the cost of athleticism like they're bigger and just way more athletic than you and stronger so and i know Kawhi doesn't care about that but if he already has to play six on five with james harden fucking trying to block his jump shots <laughs> now it's him and uh zion jumping at you like I'm, he might miss a couple of those they point zion get the rebound he off to the break because like again he yeah got- you better match up quickly because if not he's walking right to the rim <laughs> he got that lob I can't remember who they were playing, uh, but he took out. He, he leapt from like the free throw line, caught it, <laughs> and dunked it. I think it's his best dunk as a pro so far. It was absurd. Everything been kind of overshadowed by the Ant Man. Some solid, some solid Ant's dunkery been has been lost in the uh, mm-hmm. Ant Man debate or discourse. I should say. I don't think it's a debate. Oh, it was against Brooklyn. Yeah, it was in Brooklyn. I, he just catches this thing. And he just keeps going up. Like, it was preposterous. I think someone at VCU had a similar dunk. Have you seen that one? <laughs> it's in slow motion, but he's just looking down at the... Like, he looks bored. Yeah, just kind of like, yeah, lays it in and next. lowers himself to the ground. That's how... Defensively, Zion moving like Duke Zion. 
Athletically, mm-hmm. that's close to what he looks like. And that's been the whole like that was the only ever the knock. That and the shot. But again, if he's playing point guard with the ball, the shot matters less because he got forty percent, forty percent, forty percent three point shooter or good shooters around him. And I matchup wise, man, that's they're a half game apart, so who knows right now who would even have home court, how much that would matter. But if the Suns get in there, I just don't like – do the Suns physically have the bodies for the Pelicans? Right. No. Well, it's interesting because I saw teams try and sag on Zion because they're daring him to shoot, but it doesn't work when this bowling ball – like giving him a head of steam also is a bad idea. Like Ben Simmons isn't taking – that cushion you're giving him and doing anything with it. And he, even without the back injury, no one has Zion's athleticism. If you give him a running start, I don't care that he can't shoot. Like you're at a massive disadvantage, letting him get a full head of steam. Yeah. If he takes three steps, he can like jump from anywhere and you're just encouraging him right. to take the three steps. So I don't know. They, they are cooking. They are cooking, which is kind of tank. My saw a couple weeks ago somebody was like man the pelicans need a point guard what they need is Dejounte murray for herb jones and trey murphy the third i said that's yeah i said that's exactly what the pelicans need there's you uh in the mirror yeah me and me creating graphics yeah Yeah. (laughs) i said you know what man i'd settle for either one of those guys for real i won't even i won't even tax you big dog just run us just run the hawks herb jones real quick and we'll call that even steven (laughs) Quinn Snyder would probably have him, I don't know, uh, running point, playing center, doing something. What's going on with, with your Atlanta Hawks? Listen, they slick cooking now. This is where I have to – it's tough because Trey Young's been putting me in a bad spot. He hadn't even been playing. We went to Charlotte for like underdog March Madness event, and they keep showing – Trey Young has a podcast, and they're showing advertisements for it and every time – they show their advertisement. They're looking at me like, what's going on with Trey? I'm like, that's for the pot. Like, they're not showing this number. They're not showing somebody scoring 70. What's going on with the pot? I don't know. I didn't know yet, but he does. So. He does. He put me in a bad spot. But it's for sure. I don't I don't even know who they choose, but DeJounte Murray's cooked, like, too much without Trey Young. Like, I've looked this year and last year. It's been 26 games. 26 points, nine assists, six rebounds a game without Trey. So whatever you think of DeJounte Murray, he needs to be like the sole point guard or lead guard, facilitator, whatever. Putting him secondary, you just not getting maximum DeJounte Murray. And I feel like he gets a rap as a uh, what do you say? Max Murray. Yeah. Too late for that. But I feel like he gets a rap as like a bad shooter and he's not. I feel like he's a fine shooter. Right. Like, I saw 36% on catch and shoot, 42% on corner threes, and I think on the whole, he's like 36. And if he's the one with the ball, you can live with that. He was one of the few that showed up yeah. in the playoffs last year, which I appreciate. True. Him and John Collins, who has since been killed. That was – both people getting injured <laughs> on the poster dunk is – like, dislocated finger and concussion is devastating. Just devastating. Anthony, I'm like, I couldn't even celebrate because I hurt my finger. Yeah, broke my wrist in half. <laughs> but the Pelicans, the Nets, the Lakers, the one that interests me, the Orlando Magic might could use some DeJounte Murray. Just because they kind of had, like, Paolo and Franz run everything, but Suggs is one of the guards. He's a lock there. But if DeJounte Murray was in the Cole Anthony, Markel Fultz, Anthony Black spot right now. That's a legit team because the Magic might be here right now too. That like they're young as hell. They defend. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, about no, them. they are. <laughs> they might be here right now, and it's like, what if those just the Fultz Cole Anthony minutes were? Dejan, you could still have Paolo, and it like run some some stuff. But I do wonder how much more you would get out of them by also letting them get to their spots, and letting somebody feed it to them. DeJounte Suggs would be horrifying defensively. They would for sure have some cold nights together. Uh, and that's where I think they would get in trouble. But not defensively, they Paolo's, wouldn't. No, not defensively, but Paolo's like it's still only year two for him. I feel like he's been 
so overshadowed by Wemby coming into the league, Chet being healthy. Like there's, and I really hate to say this, there's a lot of really good young talent in the league right now where a guy like Paolo, he, cause I got off to like a sluggish start as well. Mm-hmm. Or I guess it wasn't even like the start. Like December, January was sluggish. And since February, I think they're the second or third best team in the league record wise since February 1st. Probably. Like their defense is. Yeah. And they, they just can't. Like they need somebody to score points. And again, just. I feel like changing the guard spot is the easiest. Like I feel like the rest of their lineup fits. And I'm not even. This is not even me saying that yeah. they should. Yeah, trade eight for. Or mortgage the future. But it's like, hey, if we're. Let's look at the East stand. Is it a home court? Are they close? They're the fifth seed right now. They're like 3-4. Yeah. But, but, but by half yeah, they a game. They lost to yeah. Sacramento. They're yeah. a game back at the three seed just because their defense. Like, man, if they had a guy who could score 20 points instead of you try to cobble together 20 points and help you defensively, maybe so. But those are the teams I think legit. Nets, Pelicans, Lakers, Magic. Potentially Spurs, Jazz, Wizards, depending on how they go. But – uh, Trey and Dejounte, like I've, Sabonis, it reminds me of Sabonis and Turner. Like I think Trey Young is a better player. Sure. I think Sabonis is a better player. I think Miles Turner fits any situation you want. I think Dejounte Murray could fit any situation outside of putting him next to Trey Young. Any other situation outside you know? of this specific, yeah, situation. outside of yeah, taking away all the things he's good at offensively and forcing him to defend up a position defensively every single night. So Trey, love to give up the house for and ask him to do completely different things on both sides of the ball. Good times. This is when I can just see the sneakiest GM in the league, Brad Stevens, being like, all right, this is we're going to send Drew Holiday over here. We'll take, we'll take DeJounte off your hands. We know he doesn't work well with Derek White. Wink, wink. But we'll, we'll, we'll try it out. The thing I'll say is DeJounte, he's just on a great contract. He makes $80 million over the next, like for next year, the next three years. Trey make 135 over the next three. And the Hawks are cheap. So if they're like, we are trying to cut a buck, would you trade the more talented player? But I don't – now with this podcast business, I don't even know if he's <laughs> – if nobody thinks Trey Young's good, then he – I don't think he's overrated. But that's neither here nor there. Basketball Justin Fields, yeah. <laughs> He'll be backing up Russell Wilson <laughs> soon. <laughs> Making a conference finals was the – it was the entire thing. Chris Paul's – like, they yelled at him for a decade. And when a team doesn't, it's like, oh, that don't count. Look at who he went through. Multiple All-NBA players having multiple All-NBA seasons? Doesn't count. Look at what Tyrese Halliburton can do. He did beat Embiid, which, I mean, big whoop. Like, I, that guy won – he beat Embiid does. into an MVP season the next year fuck else was there oh it was different sports entirely but still basketball nevertheless uh, it's march madness and by madness i mean com- the most sane i've ever seen probably the most sane march i can recall the higher seeds for the most part just beating the lower seeds must be nice um any th- <laughs> any thoughts hey it must be nice just me it was a squidward looking outside everybody was like man oh man 3C walking down a 14. I remember those days. Wow. <laughs> Six beating 11. That, I, that's rich. Now, you didn't see this really coming at all. Were you shocked to find out that Oakland could shoot like that? Yeah, who could have Who could have known? Listen, the boy hit 10 threes. On probably six of those, I don't know how much better defense some of them could have been played. He was just nailing some inc- incredible shots. Incredible shots. Yeah. But... Either way, it's time for the old boy to go, man. It sounds like a decision might be made soon. I, he will be back. I just don't think they're going to pay the buyout money. Even though the buyout is not as bad as it sounds. It's $34 million, but none of it has to be paid lump sum, like zero. Kevin Sumlin, when Kevin Sumlin got bought out, his shit had to be paid like two weeks. Like all of it. <laughs> so, like, Jimbo had to get a certain percentage of it. Cows, one, there's no lump sum. And two, there's no deadline. It could just, they could just pay him out normally till the end of the contract in 2029. So there's not okay. it's not like you have to have 30 million dollars right here today. There's also offset language. So any job he takes, if he takes the like Vanderbilt job right now, whatever he t- gets per year is off the Kentucky money they owe him. So it's not as tall a task. 
I think he's earned the right to go out on his own. Like, I don't think he should be fired. I think he would probably step down. I think he's, even with the last five years, he's done enough for this program program where I think he should be allowed to step down on earth, make his own decision instead of being fired. I was going to say, how how does that play with the money, though? With the, the buyout? See, that's what I don't know. But he's also, there's a clause in the contract where he would step into, like, an ambassador of the program and stay around. But he said it openly. He's like, one job pays me $9 million and one pays me $1 million. Do you know anybody that would turn down the $9 million <laughs> for the one million? Because I don't. I'm just saying that I don't. <laughs> There's no one in this room right now named John Raise, yeah. that would ever do that. Raise your hand if you would turn down the $8 billion. So there's also there's a, a school of thought. I think they're going to do enough to try to piss him off to where he leaves. His name was spelled wrong on the front of the Lexington newspaper. Ah, that was tough. Above the fold, Mick? <laughs> Listen, my father worked for the newspaper for several years. I know somebody, there might have been bloodshed about John Calipari's name being spelled wrong on the front of the Lexington Herald leader today. The press has probably literally had to be stopped and not in time. Because <laughs> they spell Calipari no. with a K. You can't do that. I think, like, stuff like that. I don't like think that, they got the amount of L's correct either. I don't, like, all it was just so, like, it felt very intentional. Like, get this fucking guy out of here. I'm telling you, that is rumors that. Like the athletic direct Kentucky basketball's kind of just been its own thing because it's been successful in money making, and it seems like now administration's gonna be like, okay, you have to be more like the. Basically, we have more say. You have less control now because you haven't had the results to the point where you're hoping it pisses Cal off to walk away, but he's not gonna walk away from nine million dollars. No. So no. he'll be back. It is what it is, but there is a very, very funny timeline where he takes the Louisville job to piss Kentucky off, and Rick Pitino takes the Lexington job to kind of fighting fire with fire business. So I'm I'm staying patient. I'm waiting. Jay Wright, Danny Hurley, Brad Stevens. I'm really not picky. Um, oh, two of those guys aren't going anywhere. Jay Wright, I could see. Listen, Hur- Hurley, you're going to have to tell me no then. And I'm sure he does immediately, but he, yeah, right. he'll have to. Oh, definitely oh. ask, but I, I don't know why he would want to leave what he's got going. He's got a blue blood that wins. They, I, they win. I don't know if you want to be a blue blood, <laughs> honestly. Uh, Stevens would look good in that shade of blue. Um, I've heard Scott Drew. I don't know how I feel about Scott, the Baylor current head coach. Okay. Um, I'm always hesitant to anything Baylor. Uh, just well, he won like a ring there, and it's supposed kinda... to be the good. So if he, the case is like, if he did it there, what could he do? So, sure. I get the only person I don't like: no Bruce Pearl, no Chris, no, no. Chris Beard. Outside that, I'm kind of. What's uh? Who's Alabama's head coach uh, with the the horrifying stare? Oates, Nate Oates. <laughs> yeah, Nate Oates. Oates is trying to be on Oat time. I, Oates would be fine. I wouldn't mind. That, but now nah, again, Jay Wright, her Billy Donovan. I wouldn't mind Billy Donovan either. Has has anyone ever been a first time coach at Kentucky outside of like Adolph Rupp? Like, has there ever been a that's, first time coach? Like, that's the debate now. It's like, so what are you looking for? Because most of the guys are like sixty plus. Like right. Jay Wright, not a young man. Donovan, not. I don't know how old Danny Hurley is, but he's. He's not young. So there are people that want, it's like, okay, could you get the 30 year old guy making his name? And it's like, if you try that with Billy Gillespie, like, you know what I'm saying? You can't really make your name at, with a spotlight this big. You have to have already proven something to an extent. What if it were a former player from Kentucky? Well, Mark Pope was rumored because he coaches BYU. He's had them in the tournament a couple of times. And honestly, if, if I was Mark Pope, I wouldn't take it. Like, one, you have enormous shoes to follow. Like, BYU, their expectations now versus, like, coming to Kentucky. Like, being the hometown kid, it gets you a couple years to get your feet wet. But this is, like, a fan base that is rabid for, win- like, right now. I don't know if he would get the time to develop that he would deserve. So, like, if they offer it in the super bag, you probably take it, of course. But for him long term, yeah. I it would – 
it'd be stepping into a a tough spot. Like Patino's the only sick and uh, sicko enough to be like, I'll do it for free. I hate my teams. I hate the team <laughs> I built so much right now. I hate them. So, I hate them just so much that I would do it. Bill Self said he's already he's been thinking about next season for for months now. He... <laughs> I, a lot of shit going with Bill Self in Kansas. I was like, man, oh man, if you switch the name on that, it would just be. A lot. I'm not even saying Calipari in general, but just other head coaches would be in much hotter water for things to go on there. But he got for sure. He got two. T- Once you get two, man, they oh, they leave you alone, and we can't get to the second weekend. So that's that's canceled. That's a wrap. You can't get to the, the weekend. No, this weekend. <laughs> the first week. <laughs> this is the grace I always gave Calipari was even in it's always single game tournament. Even with the best play, guys are going to make all stars with a single individual team. The best team doesn't always win. We see that from the NF. Anything no. with single team, that's just how it goes. So the case that well, he's been there ten years. You should have ten championships. That was never going to be the case. No. Where Cal's lost it is our our floor should never be this low. That's where he's lost it. Because even when we weren't, if we weren't making the championship, we we're making the final four, making the elite eight. I think he elite eight, like his first like six years here, that was supposed to be the floor. The floor right. cannot be nine wins missing the tournament. The floor can't be multiple first round flame outs. The floor can't be five years where you haven't made it to the sweet 16. That's where he's lost. Because with all the talent, the way he coaches, his style, your ceiling was super high, but your floor, it it can't be that low. Even if you bring in a new team every year of 18-year-olds, it can't be round of 32, round of 64, no tournament, round of 30. It can't be that. And that's where I think he's lost a good bit of the support that he's had. That's what I was thinking about when this game was going final and people were shitting on his recruiting style and all this. When he started this one and dones the average age of a senior was like 21 uh Golke, fucking 30 years old out there like he'd be on his second contract in the nba if he came out when he was 18 he'd be a you know lieutenant I mean? like, in the force man. man he'd be on his uh <laughs> second career yeah i so it's like now he's playing people in their legitimate mid-20s like Golke is legitimately 25 not a young man at all obviously he should have an answer for like the white shooter every fucking team in the world is a white shooter it doesn't really matter what their age is but it does make me think the current landscape of college not even the NL, nil part of it but just like the old fucking people playing college sports mm-hmm. yeah it doesn't shock me like when the 18 year olds who are already thinking about the nba in a couple of months like dillingham and Reed Shepard, who I don't think he knows that game started yet. That's another place where Cal lost it. When Cal was cooking and we lost Final Four at Elite Eight, I feel like it was all on, like it was my fault. I didn't adjust, blah, blah, blah. Now after this game, he's like, hey, man, our freshman fucking sucked. It's like, hey, you're not wrong, <laughs> but you can't say that. <laughs> yeah, say it to them, not yeah, to us. You, we ha- you have to say, I could have schemed better, blah, blah, blah. You let us say, well, Reed Shepard scored three points. Well, Rob Dillingham was two for nine. Well, DJ didn't score a single point. You you let us add that context. You can't be like, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, let me roll over him and uh, back over him, roll over him, and back over him again. <laughs> so that's the game. That's where we're at now. Nothing's going to change. I look forward to the announcement probably as soon as we get off here. Uh, extension. <laughs> On the, they re yeah they restructured like the New Orleans Saints. Cal took a, uh, he gets a ten ten million dollar bonus next June first instead of his current contract. So <laughs> the post June first fire yeah, cap yeah, release. <laughs> so that's the, yeah. the reason I asked about first time coach was uh, current podcaster LeBron James floated. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rajon Rondo as why isn't this guy coaching and then immediately answered his own question oh yeah it's a lot of work um, but obvious Kentucky uh, connection allegations keep coming for Rondo which kills me as that's why yeah loving I, him. it'd be a no for him for the, for that reason yeah. he's not replacing a, he's not replacing the cleanest whistle in the world exactly it's a different type of like it's for the Chris Beard it ain't for about sure. the on yeah, court it's the, the the type of whistling right 
And all a first time I again, I just feel like with where the program is now, like Shire taking over for Coach K, even though they didn't go out with a championship, they was in the championship in the final four. Like you're trying to sure. kind of keep it high. Whoever got to come in, you got to figure that out as a first time head coach. And you got the hometown boy stuff on you. And it's like, well, hey, man, the last five years, we ain't had shit. And it's like, that wasn't my fault, but you got to deal with it. <laughs> like, you got to deal with it sure. right now. So, yeah. I, like, Ulysses is on the coaching staff right now. I wouldn't hate running this out a couple of years if they're just not going to pay the, bay, the buyout. Like, don't, don't buy out to go get Chris Beard, to go get Bruce Pearl. That's where it's like, what the sure. fuck are we doing? But, yeah. Bruce Pearl, he can stay at Auburn. Like that's and not about him being. A, he's a good, a good coach. His teams have success. I just yeah. don't want. I want. I don't want in on the Bruce Pearl business. No, he's a perfectly adequate coach, and I do like Elite Eight as anyone's floor. Really says a lot of how much they were cooking. Mm-hmm. I don't think Sweet Sixteen's a crazy ass because of everything you said. It's single elimination. You never know what's going to happen. If he had just beat Wisconsin, I think his legacy's. And it's as intact as any coach. Like, obviously, at three four would be insane. But if he had just won, if he had had those two undefeated seasons, I don't know anyone would say anything. Obviously, Kentucky fans would eventually get over it. I obviously just went through something similar with Belichick. Uh, Alabama just did it with Saban, and Cal's honestly, no disrespect, not on either of their levels, but close enough. Um, if he had that one with Towns and Book in them. If he remembered to play Devin Booker more, uh, maybe things would be would that, different. I mean, it was still a championship game after that. If they go 40-0, you know, I honestly, I think he retires. Like, I don't think we've had any. I think that was, wow. he said before, like, that's my goal. And after that, he was like, if that team couldn't do it, I don't know if it could be done. And since then, we've seen Gonzaga get right. close and not do it. So, and in this era, 40-0 and 0 is, or would be okay, ridiculous. Awesome. I honestly think. He wanted to do that, and coaches. I think was Brad. I think Brad was on that team as well. Like I think he went. He went to coaches. I came after that. Was he right after that? Let me. See. He may have been a freshman. That's then. what I'm he trying very to. Well, could have been a freshman. Was the first time anyone's ever Googled Brad Calipari's college stats. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brad had it on the other day at the game. No quiet as it's kept. He yeah, did. That, that was very funny. <laughs> had it on. Um, okay, now he was. Brad's first year was the Elite Eight year. So it was still cooking. Okay. The 38 one. Okay, so two years. I thought that he wanted an undefeated season. And I think he wanted to coach Brad. And after that, I think he would have been out, like retired. I, I don't. He was already in the Hall of Fame. He's made the money. He's got right. guys into the league. I think those were his two. And he, I think he would have just walked away. Maybe even during Brad's career. Like if he got the 40 and 0, got to coach Brad. Hey, what were they going to do? Cut him? That's what I'm saying. They weren't going to. Sorry, Brad. Uh, I've got a manual quickly coming in. So I, I, I thought, I mean, yeah, I thought the AD team went undefeated. I don't remember them losing. Obviously, no. that wasn't the case. Yeah, uh, Indiana on a last second shot got that one back in the NCAA tournament, and Vanderbilt in the SEC tournament. We beat them twice regular oh, wow. season. So those are the, those are the two. I don't remember that team losing. Even for a second, but uh, listen, they still hold. They that. celebrated. I was like, it wasn't even Indiana, Kentucky, and Indiana. Correct me if I'm wrong. They still celebrate the shot. I think Christian Watford hit to beat that Kentucky team in a regular season game. Oh yeah, now I remember. Yeah, Christian Watford shot. Okay, that's, I was like, yeah. yeah. I, if y'all playing <laughs> at us, okay, y'all not even playing us. What is that? But Kentucky, and Indiana should be playing every year. But that's that's different story. I don't hate that. There's certain oh, schools we should play rivalry. every year. Indiana's one of them. Texas, Tennessee should play every year. They might. I don't know. With the conference. The Barnes Bowl. They might play like five times a year. Well, it's the <laughs> Barnes Bowl. But when I think of perennial fuck-ups, those two teams come to mind quickly. For all sports, not just basketball. Sports in general. Those two teams come very quickly to mind. And watching the end of that game only furthered that point. Someone was going to fuck it up. Texas was stepping in a line with, I believe, a chance to take a lead. No, no, it was to tie. It was to tie. Uh, kid just bricks both of them. It was like, our, Real buddy, <laughs> at least go one for two. I understand he wasn't going to hit both of them. That's not how college basketball works. You can't go 0 for two. That's not how that goes. No, I'm, that's usually how it goes in uh, in college ball. <laughs> that's lucky they both hit the rim. Well, then they fouled. There was another game. 
uh, the buddy on Clemson gets fouled. I can't remember who they just beat. They beat a three. Is that Baylor? Uh, no. Yes, I think you're right. Yeah, it was. That's actually the game I was thinking of. Apologies to Texas. This was the game I was thinking. Different Texas team. That's why you got to play to beat the allegations. They, yeah, they they foul. And this is one thing I think is maybe the worst thing you can hear if you're a fan of the other team. They foul the, the white point guard on Clemson. And the reporter goes, second in the nation in free throws. It's like, of all the people to foul, <laughs> you get the 94% guy. Anyone else is missing at least one of these. You still are in the game. This kid's not missing... He'd be there with Mantis, the blindfold on, getting him, getting him down. Yep, he hasn't missed a shot to free throw since middle school, <laughs> which is now 12 years ago. He's 26. Did you have any other takeaways? The only other, I haven't watched a ton of it because it's college basketball, which I detest, but I was watching uh, Wisconsin play in the, the part of my take bowl, uh, James Madison versus Wisconsin. <laughs> and, J- and uh, like Wisconsin... They were getting killed at the rim the entire second half. They were the only team with a seven-footer on the court, you understand. I don't know. I'm sure he was highly recruited. He's seven-footer. He, he obviously wasn't bad. But take him off the goddamn... If he's not going to defend the rim at all, and then he's not a threat offensively either, which they were kind of using him as like uh, high post. They were passing it to him and cutting and then just not scoring at all so it was like he's not an offensive threat and he's not doing anything defensively get him out and the second they did get him out they started running and they were actually scoring it's like what what are you doing Listen. you're getting killed with pick and roll and physicality you've got a seven footer out there just taking up space you don't have any backups though you that's assuming you have one but their backups were better and then what, <laughs> it was two when i know kentucky was going to lose the game one there was a number 10 on their team and he was a guard but honestly i was like he's He's bigger than all our guards, but he's not posting them up. He can't get past them because our guards are so much smaller and quicker. He's not even really facilitating. He's kind of just bringing it up and then moving and not doing much. Yeah. Why is he out there? And when he would go out, they had, like, some real space. That's when Goki was really, like, running around some screens. So one, late, they took him out. We kept DJ Wagner in. I said, we're losing this game. Mm. That's when it's like one team is adjusting to the game that is currently going on, right? 10 might have been right. a fifth-year senior. He might have been tied to that coach forever. He was willing to sit him down late, and our coach wasn't willing to make those adjustments. That's when he was losing the game. Yeah, Cal's never been a big adjustment guy. Uh, we just play our game. Is... <laughs> oh, wait, can y'all play UConn's game? Can y'all play, like, uh, can y'all play somebody else's game? <laughs> Once, let's just let's just just to be let's just be silly. Let's just, just let's see. just be silly. Just, just, what's the worst that could happen? Like it, they showed that like the analytics chart, like where the every college team ranks in offense and defense on the grid. All sixteen of the Sweet Sixteen teams are in the positive offensive and negative, or it's gonna be positive offense and defensive quadrant. It's like, huh? Who knew that even though Kentucky was one of the, the one of the most efficient offenses in the country and that Kentucky has ever had in a shit defensive team. Who knew that wouldn't play over single game sample size? What evidence was there of a of single game not working out when you <laughs> jack it up and hope for the best? What could be done? What could possibly be done? No, nothing. You can't do anything about that. Um, but yeah, the rest of the tournament largely boring, and I think that's usually good for the tournament. People like to pretend they love the the 15 beating the two and, and all the crazy upsets all over the place. Then you get to weekend two, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel for storylines. They have no idea who's in the goddamn tournament. And it becomes a very unwatchable product when these teams, their adrenaline wears off and they're just playing 34, 33 ball late into the second half. Like that's, so I think it's overall good that the first weekend was chock for the most part. You got a couple upsets right now. The team I would not want to play if I was anybody absolutely anybody is nc state that's the team that has that vibe to them I, they're not going to win at all I, that's not how this story goes for the george masons right. uh, the lsus of the world they're not going to win at all but they will be final four say, I think those final teams can usually win two future. weekends right the fired coach unfired coach i look <laughs> is that the, that's nc state right is that the, where they fired their coach but let them or do i have that i believe is so that, <laughs> Either way. I mean, you would know better than me. I Yeah, I love NC State, bro. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I, 
All I know is they've got a big motherfucker. And when you've got a big motherfucker, you've got my attention. I was looking now at the Sweet 16. Lowest seed is, yeah, that NC State 11 seed team. Guess who we would have played if we won one game? Like, we could, it could have just all been essentially chalk. But, no. But I got to tell y'all about next year's recruiting class, though, bro. Like, next year. But let me tell y'all, bro. Next year, oh, my gosh. You know, we got a point guard that, oh, my God, he can point. Oh, my goodness. If 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 next year's recruiting class doesn't have three grad transfers, I don't give a fuck. Like, they're not going to do anything. I mean, that's pretty much – that's the – game now which before it made this kind of divide to cal's credit i think he was like yes i will bet on the 18 and 19 year old super talented guys versus the three and four year 21 22 year old seniors versus the 28 the 29 year old i I can't fight fire with 18 year old like i you gonna have to get you some and they get like antonio i hate that for antonio reed because he came in balled all year was the only one that kept us in. Like, if he had any type of regular game, we get blown out. He had 20, I think 27 kept us in it. So, hated for him, but that worked out on the grad transfers. But, yeah, if you're trying to, I think you have to acknowledge that winning the tournament is just different than anything, really. Like, just the way you yeah. build, construct your team. If you're, You have to be built, construct for a single game. What's the worst that could happen? We might go three for 20 this game. How can we still win? It can't be, well, we just shoot 10 more threes. That just can't be the adjustment anymore. Yeah, or you just have to have, like, like generational Anthony Davis-type player who can carry you all the way. Like, I, I still think that can work. And even then, that's, that's 10 plus years. That. Like, who's the last, like, generate? Now, they don't go to college much anymore. No, but, I yeah. agree. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, even, I mean, Overtime Elite just folded, so I don't know if that's going to make... G League at night. Yeah. Oh, G League at night. Excuse me. Same thing. Uh, it's the same one produced right? Robert Dillingham. <laughs> one is doing well. The G League at night just folded. G League at night folded. So I, I saw somebody being like, this is because of NIL. Maybe. I don't, I don't necessarily know that that's the case. Like the two or three pros per year they were getting. Uh, are they even going to go to the same school now? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know that Kamingo was going to cut down the nets himself. I, I think it's something to it just because there were, it was supposed to be an option where you, where you could make money and play ball. And with NIL, sure. now it's like, okay, I can do that in college. Because I do believe there probably were kids that was like, man, I'm, I wouldn't hate the college experience. I just want to make some bread while I'm doing it. I don't necessarily need to be in G League or overtime or overseas, but I would like to be compensated for this. And... G League, I think it was uh, Sam Vecini just did a study on the guys that came in and how they weren't really improving their draft stock. Like a couple guys kind of stayed about where they were. One or two guys may have jumped up, but the rest either like tanked or it stayed the same. And it's like, well, if if you could do that other places and you're not kind of forced out by the year, you could stay a year in college. You could stay eight years in college now, whatever college you want. So... It has somewhat changed the game, but they were just getting, I think, like, their point differential this year, they're losing every game by, like, 20 points. So it's like, what right. are you, how are you growing? How are you progressing when none of your game, like, there are no stakes to your game. You know you're going to be gone next year. These other guys, they trying to get on themselves. They don't really care about your development. So what are you, Right. what are you fighting through? What are you playing for that keeps you locked in? And I don't know, it, it's probably for the best that they're folding it than just like keep running it out and keep letting guys choose yeah. this. So I good stuff away. Yeah, is. but I don't know. It is kind of wild that that seemed almost like the future five, seven years ago, and now they had a commission. Well, I I mean to their credit, college wasn't paying anybody mm-hmm. legally five years ago. So if they forced their hand on that even a little bit, I would call it a success. Mission whether or not yeah. it's still going. Yeah. Um, but yet yeah, to to your point via San Vicini, I don't know that a lot of players even go to college. The highly ranked mm-hmm. ones, the ones that were going to G League Ignite in the first place, the scoots and all of them. Like he was gonna be in that top three. Regardless. And especially his draft specifically. He wasn't going one <laughs> no matter what. And he was gonna go top three, regard if he uh, injury is the only thing that was gonna knock him out of that top three. Mm-hmm. College, pro, any of that. You saw it with LaMelo. 
people were chirping to him for the league. He wasn't even in like the highest league in that part of the world. People were chirping him. He still goes top three. But people are going to take that bet on talent regardless. Where college helps guys is like the sophomores. You know what I mean? And that's not something that G League and Knight even offered, to my knowledge, was a year or two. Yeah, that's I know with overtime elite you can do multiple years. G League Ignite, I that yeah, that I don't know. We'll never know now. So yeah, that's where No. The thing I'll say, like if you're Even doing like just guy, one year, I it just feels like there has to be something to like playing out of conference game. Like if you're just doing one year, where whatever school you go to, playing out of conference game, you're gonna play some cupcakes, you're gonna play some teams that are a lot better than you. Getting that kind of test. Going through conference play, where you're playing a team twice. Where you might have not have been there, but they played you twice last year and the year before and the year like you know what I'm saying they know all your coaches' tricks, and they're gonna adjust to you the second time they see you. I think it's something to a conference tournament where you see a team for a third time. It's like we both know all each other's own tricks. I think it's something to going to the NCAA where it is just one game, the seeds, the prospect, none of that matters, and that's where it's like I, you don't get that in G League night. You play, I think you play a shorter schedule. And then this year in particular, you're just getting your teeth kicked in every year or every game. Right. So it's like, what what am I developing? None of us going to be here next year. This program is not going to be here. Now. So what? where's the value other than money, which I could get in college now? Right. Yeah. And probably more of it because you're not getting any like actual deals. Uh, you're just getting paid. You're getting a salary as opposed to you can kind of make unlimited money mm. in college. Uh, I saw some people were chirping Caitlin Clark for that when she was like, I'm going to the WNBA. It's like, oh, she's not going to make nearly as much money. It's like, I feel like she's kind of transcended to the point where she'll she'll be fine. What, she'll be okay. NIL is only for college, but what is NIL? It's endorsements. You think uh, Gatorade's going to... Thank, <laughs> thank you, Caitlin. Four years service. Uh, you're about to be the top pick in the WNBA. I'm sure you're going to play. You're going to win five Olympic gold medals in your tenure, but I just can't imagine our relationship going... To, Nike, Gatorade, like headphones, all that. Kate, thanks, thanks, thanks for the memories, Kate. What WNBA city uh, can even compete with Ames, Iowa, in terms of market share? Like I, this is, these are the things you're not thinking about. One, I was watching. I've watched way more of the women's tournament. That's where I've been locking in. Honestly. Much more compelling. The home games, the first two rounds is awesome. Or the like the top seed, like Iowa, Stanford, the top seeds getting to play their home games versus. Like, UNC played in Charlotte, which is close, but it ain't the home floor. You should get something for you like a top seed. Qu- please bring quarters to men's basketball, uh, college basketball. It just breaks up the flow much, much better. And the stick, the 22 sticker Iowa put on the court where Caitlin Clark broke the record is incredible. So incredible. Like, you just see it. It's like, what, what is that? And then they talk about it. It's like, okay, that's they didn't do this 10 years after the fact. They did this. She's playing on the people are walking over this. Stick. Yeah, I scored like point four thousand like from, <laughs> from right there. That's badass. I'm gonna shoot from there again. Why? It's gonna yeah. go in. I mean, I, I said it for NC State. I'll say it for Iowa State. Audie Crooks is just is swept stolen the nation's like, heart. Careful with that stolen. What careful with that stolen talk. Did you see that tweet? Oh, true. No. Oh man. <laughs> the. Uh, the Des Moines Police Department tweeted out like a graphic, and it, uh, let me—I want to get it right. I don't want to—I don't want to speak ill of the uh, Des Moines no. Police Department. Here we no, go. They're, they're big fans of the show. Yeah. So after, yeah, she cooked forty points on eighteen of twenty shooting. That's just—you talk about not having <laughs> shit for somebody. Des Moines Police, congratulations to Cyclones women's basketball and record-breaking Audie Crooks on their win tonight. And there's a graphic. It says, some crooks nobody can stop. And in the front, it's a picture of Audie Crooks. And in the background, it's a picture of a cop car. That was the... That was the graphic. And there's been so much, oh, lighten up. They didn't mean it like that. It's a play on crooks. It's like, listen, that can be your intent. But putting like cop car and that imagery next to a black woman's picture is still not going to play out the way you think it's going to play out. No. Ever. Des Moines no. Police Department social media team. The I the police. This isn't a fucking sitcom. Like the police can't. They're not <laughs> right. here to tell jokes. This isn't Brooklyn Nine Nine. Like this is. This is <laughs> branding is bad. Fucking- yes. 
I wish brands or companies just stayed companies. Why does it? Why does the police department have to be? We're watching the tournament. To, shut up. Yeah. So crimes at an all time high. I'm here, and the criminals are running that, loose. So you, you want? You're not paying attention. You want Audie in the four? Should we put her in the back? Should we put cuffs on her? Is that too? Let me see a couple options. And we'll decide. She had a, like incredible game. And this is one of the things she had to deal with instead of just being able to be like, man, I just went I, 18 or 20, man. I'm, I should have been 44. Should have been a 2020 game for the girl. <laughs> I, I she got to deal with that. Like, she needs better footwork. This bully ball is mm. not going to work forever. And I was like, ah, she's, she's kind of chefing up one of the other best centers in college basketball right now. It seems to be working just fine. And apparently there's just more. Stanford's just a factory of just – Six four bigs. They they were showing some trees. Yeah, little. But they can move and dunk. Uh, Chenea Guma, I think it was her that showed. The, she was like, "Oh yeah, I worked out with. I can't pronounce what's the young lady that was cooking last night uh, after Brink fouled uh, out. I want to get her name right. I, yeah, I'm not even gonna pretend. Nah, she was. Either way, there's like clips of her just like uh, dunking, like comfortably, and it's like that's just what Stanford's oh, yeah. on now. Yeah, Kiki uh, Iriathan. Iriath, that's I don't know if I'm pronouncing okay. it right, but she's like the leading scorer, and Brink went out, and she was like, nah, bet I got Yeah, 41, 16, four assists, three blocks. Getting busy. Light. Big busy. Yeah, we've had the uh, first goaltending uh, for punching that off the off the backboard. Because we about to have Kate the first. Clark's like, no. What... No, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. So we about to have the first coach arrested uh, during the Sweet 16. <laughs> No, she's going to keep shaking faces. She's, Kim Mulkey's getting to the bottom of this. Uh, that story, unlike the Calipari headline, <laughs> will not see the light of day. I do have the, uh, you know what the Streisand effect is? I feel like I've heard it before, but I actually don't know what it means. There was a picture, like paparazzi took a picture of Barbara Streisand, like a, her beach home. And she was like, hey, I don't want this published. I'm going to court because I don't want this picture of my beach home published. So many people were like, well, now I want to see what Barbara Streisand's beach home looks like. It became like the most search, like one of the most searched for images ever by her just saying, I don't want anybody to see this. And me thinks that might be what Kim Mulkey did. This article, I haven't read. It's so bad. I got my police and lawyers on it. And now everybody's like, well, what the fuck did she do? <laughs> I got to tell, I got to get a Washington Post or whoever it is <laughs> dropping the, I guess a hit piece. It's like, you, you don't know what's in it. I got my lawyers. What'd you do that for? We will fight. You don't know what you're fighting yet. So, and she had on just the tank, the plain quarter zip. I said, oh man, she toned it down for the, like in court, you just <laughs> black suit haircut in court. That was Kim Mulkey. Yeah. Fuck with his glasses on. Yeah, quarter yeah. zip. <laughs> Taking it serious. Taking, them making the final four and them just arresting her right off the lap. She's holding up the net. And they're just waiting for her to come up to write this way in this book. We got her. She can't move. She, yeah, she can't. In the back of the paddy wagon. <laughs> Ladder and all. Yeah. And this is, I believe it's Paige Becker's first tournament because she's injury. gotten hurt. Yeah. I, could, I saw it was her first tournament in so many days. So I don't know if she got hurt in her first tournament or that's just when she started college. I believe she uh, might have got hurt right this, before. But I'm Spot not. I'm, yeah, don't, I thought she played like most of the season, but got hurt before the tournament. But I right. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Oh yeah, this this could be a classic, and I don't. We haven't had one in a while, or maybe the last time UConn men won. Men, the men's team is one who usually fucks it up. The women's team is pretty uh, on time. Uh, lately, I, they on uh, one of them. I was like, is Gino Calipari? I'm just trying to put the Calipari out. Like, they didn't call him Ita- Italian Doc Rivers. It's anti-Italian uh, discrimination, yeah, with us. <laughs> Italian Bayheim. I was like, listen, you get one, that's what they're gonna call you. But I don't hate uh, a UConn double sweep uh, coming up fresh in these next couple of weeks. I don't know. I I kind of like dominance too, so I think I'd like. I wouldn't hate seeing Don Staley do the forty and zero. I think I got them yeah. at LSU again, which will be the third time. And South Carolina's just kind of had LSU's numbers, so I I fear we might get the anticlimactic. Like we're definitely not. I don't think we're getting South Carolina, Iowa. I feel like that's the perfect, the perfect no, star player versus no. the undefeated team. That is, you can't write that in, in the cinemas. So of course we're going to get say, two nine seed now. Yeah, that would be Bird 
magic for which they were trying to call it last year, but it would even be more so. This would be more correct with that just because it, it was supposed to be South Carolina last year too. And this is how I know women's college basketball truly has made it. It's gotten out of whatever realm it had been stuck in for so long. Uh, I've seen people like legitimately breaking down Angel Reese's game and why it won't tr- Like not even right. like the Nikaiuses of the world, just regular fans being like, hey man, I don't see it. That's when you, when when hating comes out like that, that's when it's here. Not the, the sexism hating, it's enduring. Yeah, no, we, don't, we don't care for that. Inception. But just like, she don't have a yeah. left hand. It's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's valid. <laughs> If that's your case, instead of, I just don't think she translates. Why? He's like, I'm glad you asked. Uh, Yeah. Her pick and roll defense. Look how choppy her feet are. Too choppy. It's too choppy. That's a bad contest. I'm like, that is a bad contest, Angel. So there are legitimate reasons. Also, the girls, one, get to talk shit to each other, which is great. I don't, the the boys, they don't, everybody got it too cushy, man. We played two years together four years ago, man. I know, I know the Mick, man. We was on Grand Canyon State. (laughs) <laughs> together Cameron Brink got, did you see her fouling out and telling the ref fuck you as she walked as she walked yeah. off <laughs> art my kind of player yeah yeah my kind of player art. right there that's how you skyrocket up the McMahon's draft board right there telling refs to go fuck themselves I saw a tweet the other day man, I'm still laughing about it refs should have their home addresses on the back of their jerseys I agree that's, what's stopping no, them no. that's <laughs> social security number I think is fair game Okay. Address, okay. let's not be O D, but no, your blood type, your mother's maiden name, your pin, that's your, I, I think that's all above board. <laughs> yeah, those three digits on the back of the card. Yeah, yeah get them put all those on, on there. maybe oh, what if that is the referee number? Every referee <laughs> number is just the whole time. Boy, I'm about to go run up some shit on Tony Brothers dying. <laughs> What's he? Seven two five? All this athleticism has happened uh, in the past weekend, and Shohei's had money on all of it, and we'll get to that. All this athleticism has happened, and to me, the most impressive thing that's happened all weekend also was in women's sports. Sports is a strong word for it, but Jasmine Paris went out and like truly did the thought to be impossible, not even just for women, for humans in general. She's the first woman to win the Barkley Marathon. She didn't come in first because only five fucking people finished it out of hundreds. Uh, the Barkley Marathon is something we've talked about before just because there was a documentary that came out on it a couple of years ago. I watched it, became obsessed with it. Um, it's an obs- in- obscene ultra marathon, 100 miles in the mountains of Tennessee. You get, what, 60 hours to complete it? What, some, you yeah, hiking? 60 you hours. biking? You are all the above. You're running. <laughs> You're running. You have 60 hours to finish it. So it's not like whatever your time is, right. is the time, like every other marathon. It's like you've got 60 to complete it. There are five loops. It equals up, so five 20-mile loops. So you basically run five marathons in six. And it's, what's the amount of elevation? Is it in this article? Absurd, I'm sure. Yeah, it's absurd. It's you. It's basically like you climb Everest twice, something along those <laughs> lines. Like over... If you complete the five loops, and it's not even like, oh, you get 60 hours to complete the five loops, they'll cut you off if you haven't completed the first two loops fast enough, because then they just know, like, all right, you clearly can't finish No, that's good, yeah, get get y'all's asses out of here, I can get it next year, but... It's obscene, I don't know where the documentary is streaming right now, but it's certainly worth, to enter the race, you have to, like, find the guy's address mail him something and then he decides whether or not to let you in it costs nothing to enter the race except for he replenishes his wardrobe every year through this like that's the cost to get in the deaths He's like, of I the people plunge. who don't make just still the clothes off their back <laughs> no you have to pay with like new socks uh new shirts some years like not like a bunch just like one that's your payment he just loads up his closet I kind of love that. Is that the Barkley guy? That's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, he's the... And there was a, okay. there was a clip going around about him because uh, he was... he was I can't even remember if it was from the documentary, but he was like, no woman will ever... Like, he was so sure. He was like, oh, women can't do this. They're tiny. Mountains. They're weak. Look at yeah. them. How is she going to do it <laughs> pregnant and cooking my dinner? 
I said, Jesus Christ, man. At the end of his rant, he was just like, and until someone proves me wrong, I get to have this belief. Belief's done, buddy. She made it, like I said, it's 60 hours. She had a minute 39 to spare. Like she, so she ran it in 59 hours, basically, in 59 minutes. Dude, imagine that last 90 seconds. Like you could see the finish line, but you're like, man, if I, if my shoelace is done right now, I cannot. Like I'm, <laughs> like you don't want to put the ball out too oh, yeah. soon, like Deshaun Jackson. Uh, <laughs> well, you also don't really know how much time. Like oh, it's true. not like it's not a, a it's fucking not a beater, marathon, yeah. like. Like you could cross the finish line theoretically, and then be like, "You missed sixty oh oh two, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and again, you've just run a hundred miles in sixty hours. Like you are fucking tired. Like people typically run a loop, get new shoes. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like they go to their car, they eat. There's not a ton of sleeping that happens over these sixty hours. It is insane. So I think she's the twenty twentieth person. Yeah. 20th ever to f- finish in 60 hours. And it's been going on since 1989. She's the 20th person. So 19 guys. And it's not even 19 guys because I know there's a couple of people who have won it multiple times. So right. it's like 14 people ever have won- have completed this. You know what I mean? It's absurd. Nah, she got to get his ass a, a dress or something. She said, you want something for a, a nice blouse <laughs> or something? So you remember this buddy boy. You remember who can't win this shit next year? I do love getting funded a whole new fit like that. Just people just bring like y'all know my side. Just what and whatever you bring, I will wear. <laughs> whatever you bring, I will wear. Yeah, there is this is from the BBC article. Uh, there is no official start time with those who make it to the Frozen Head State Park campground on the correct date, notified one hour beforehand by the sound the sound of a conch shell horn. So he just, you hear it, you in. If you don't, you don't. The race officially begins when the race director lights a cigarette. I love the everything, everything about, about yeah, <laughs> except the running part. Well, I except for why they came up with this idea because I remember I've told you this before and you you shouldn't love it. Most people shouldn't love the idea behind why. Oh um, buddy who shot MLK, what was his uh, name? James Ray, James Earl Ray. Yeah. So when James Earl Ray broke out of prison in these very same mountains. He was lost for a hundred hours or for 60 hours, excuse me. And they found him like seven miles away, like not far at all. <laughs> so this guy who found at the Barkley marathons was like, I could definitely make it more than seven miles in 60 hours. I bet I could do a hundred miles. So they tested it in these very mountains and that's where the race came from. They didn't want to tweak it at all. Like it was like, Hey man, I know he said a hundred, but what was, 72. Like, let's, let's cut 28 miles off there, boy. It was just two uh, cross-country runners talking shit. Like, I bet I could do 50. I bet I could do... Like, they were just shitting on James Earl Ray, being like, this fucking pussy barely made it to the other side of the mountain. If I smoked it's Martin Luther hours. King, I would have made it at least... <laughs> at least 150. 200, probably. So that's where the race comes from. Someone breaking out of prison, not making it very far at all, getting caught... They were like, yeah, what if we just put the fucking course right there? There are no, like, there are, there's no, like, physical checkpoints because, again, it's 20 miles through the mountains. So he just leaves various books all over the place, and you have to rip out a page and put it in a baggie. That's how it knows, That's like, oh, you went that way. This is deranged, though. There, it's insane. There's no cash like, prize uh, for this, was... right? There's no sponsors or anything. That's no. what, but, but I'm saying, but this hasn't been, you know he's been approached like, hey, man, this could be the. Oh, yeah. Asics Barkley Marathon. He's like, not in my sweet game. Not in my peer peer game. Yeah, he's like, I could have twenty people bring me Asics every year if I wanted to. I'm Why a billionaire. I could buy again, Asics like the, the company, <laughs> not a pair. Thousands of people apply each year and just get told like don't get told anything. They just <laughs> don't hear back ever. Like it's unbelievable. He's like, no, nah, I like to keep you know fifty, a hundred people, good company for a couple days. Perfect size room for a small party, for a small marathon, 100, 150. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, so yeah, shout out Jasmine Paris, who, just an insane accomplishment, like genuinely insane accomplishment, and also making it by that close. When she heard the time, she must have, like, I'm sure she shit herself several times over the course of the weekend. Yeah, that's part of the game. (laughs) 
<laughs> then specifically, she must have been like, I like imag I can't imagine being told you missed it by five seconds. Better luck next year. Like I, everyone here is dying. Nah. I'm not. I'm not okay with. That's that. one of those. <laughs> Like in a movie where they just kill the sound to just show like rage. <laughs> that's what it would be. Yeah, noise. that's just <laughs> a white noise. <laughs> like, yeah. No. After, fi after finding out she missed the race by six seconds, she ran it completely backwards in 14 <laughs> minutes out of rage, pure rage <laughs> and hatred before succumbing to exhaustion. <laughs> yeah. She was 26. Uh, yeah, I and I. what really broke her into tears after was she found out Shohei had the over, uh, <laughs> 59 and 30, and she just couldn't believe Shohei didn't believe in, him, in her like that. She, well, Shohei was getting bad really information, man. Uh, frequently, Trent, sounds like. Uh, <laughs> I don't think she's going to make it. I'd probably go lower. Donnie just went with that. Meantime, uh, buddy's, buddy's hammering the hires. Uh, the, all the story that's come out recently being like Shohei doesn't even like other sports and then there's like 20 pictures of him at NCAA games of all things yeah, uh, <laughs> where are you at Florida A&M Princeton in 2019 <laughs> looking like this very shifty it's an audible groan when this three was missed uh, can you explain that <laughs> Show his favorite show is Bad Beats with Scott Van Pelt. Uh, <laughs> he loves it. He's like, I had that yeah. beat too, Scott. Yeah, I can't believe Two it. Two and a half. Uh, I'm floored by this. I story. know he, he has a, a press conference coming out today. I don't know if it, I don't think it happened yet. And I also don't know who's going to fucking translate it because his translator got fired. That's, they say he's been trying to tell us for years, man. This man is robbing me blind. Help me. The Rockies are such a formidable opponent. <laughs> Baseball. <laughs> and everyone claps gently. <laughs> and they just usher Otani off. He just goes on. The Red Sox last year, I remember in the middle of the season saying, I don't think this translator is translating. Like, I can't prove it because I don't speak... <laughs> I don't do his job. Like, I have no idea. But to me, it seems like he's mailing it in. Like, there's, I know English and <laughs> Japanese and Spanish. You could say the same sentence. They'd all take different times to finish those sentences. Like, I get that. But it sounds to me like not all of the information is not getting translated back into English. That, like, we get a Cliff Notes version at best. And then he got fired a few months later because it came true. He wasn't translating at all. He was just making shit up. And now you got this guy who lied about where he went to college. That was very funny. He lied about a lot of things in <laughs> his biography. <laughs> and uh, Shohei also, his team already changed the story before, much like Kim Mulkey, before the story even came out, they changed the story. That's where I said, now hold the fuck on now. That story broke Friday. We were about to go to the event. And then like, by the time we got there, it was like, wait, now they're saying it was a theft. So that's where everybody was like, now hold on a, a minute. Y'all should have had y'all shit straight by the time we found this. Whatever side you decided on, y'all supposed to have that straight before any of us found out about it. This guy, Ipe, has no lawyer, it sounds like. Their ESPN keeps texting him. He keeps answering. Like, he's, he's singing like you wouldn't believe. He's going to be on Bad Beast with Van Pelt next. Yeah, Clemson. Are you kidding yeah. me? <laughs> How can I leverage this into my next career? Yeah, this. <laughs> Baseball tonight. Him and Harold Reynolds up yeah, there. Just, yeah. <laughs> Y'all know I'm a hard worker. I literally have to. It's uh, all very funny because I ultimately don't care. A lot of people are getting like, put Pete Rose in, sign Trevor Bauer. All these are logical things to say in response to this. Pete Rose should be in. That doesn't bother. Like, what he did never bothered me. I have no problem with him being in the, the betting wise. Player. He's done some other things that, that bother sure, everyone. Yes. Yeah. For, the, for the reason he's in not in Correct. specifically, yeah. that doesn't bother me. Pete Rose on the hall, yeah, bothers me tremendously. <laughs> but hell, hell of a hitter. We can all agree there. Um, 
and nothing can happen in the MLB anymore without just the weirdest fucking people in the world being like, now Trevor Bowers should get a contract. Like, enough. <laughs> fucking I, knock it off. I get, once you introduce a slippery slope, people will argue any slope is slippery. Of course. So of that, course. who's to say they're not the same? It's like, I, the evidence from the case? Is that, <laughs> that that's to, to say these are hey, the same? Cases, all right? You're right. My fault, OG. Uh, I'm just thinking now, whenever Otani retires, who's going to write that first? This is why I could not vote <laughs> for Shohei Otani. For the, is he a first? Like, see, does this stop him from being a first ballot Hall of Famer? Just whatever, because we don't even know what all is going to come out. It'll be on the resume. In some extent, it might be at the minor blip. It might be the tip of the iceberg of shit we find out. But as of right now, would this stop him from being first ballot? I think it's too soon to say. Like I said, Shohei hasn't even spoken yet, and he could easily... Like, they've handled it so poorly, I don't know why they're allowing him to speak. Like yeah, Get up on... Yeah, tell your story on, on the uh, stand, on the witness stand. Tell them you didn't kill them people. So that's where I, I don't know, because my mind goes to... These leagues are just so newly in bed with gambling as a whole that it makes me think they're just going to bury this to the point where it's not even a thing many people remember. Like, by the middle of the season, let alone two, three years from now, there there will always be people who bring it up, of course, but I don't think it's something that even gets mentioned. Now, again, if it gets much worse, uh, because this all started because the bookie in California that they were using got swept up on by the Fed. So, like, that's kind of the guy Otani needs to... Ipe's a nobody here. Like, clearly it doesn't matter. That's the guy he needs to worry about not uh, singing a song. Because if he has, like, actual proof... I know he was marketing his sports book in the underground as, like, this is Otani's number one <laughs> sports book. Like, that's Otani, how he was, Otani yeah. and Kevin Hart in the commercials. Uh. That's how he was building uh, his user base. And then Otani, I, I was saying this to Kev the other day, like, Otani's obviously a baseball genius, like, very smart, baseball savant type guy. He might just only be, base, he might be a fucking moron outside <laughs> of that, because putting your own name on the transfer is day one stuff. You don't have to see, you have to, I don't care how many movies you've seen. <laughs> you have to know not to put your official government on the transfer. SO17, I can be reached that uh, this is the address. At, like, this is the address at the Angel Stadium. Do we think this is the same yeah. guy? He's probably good for it. Maybe he was just. He uh, just thought he was helping the power. He said, "You, you need four and a half." He said, "Man, I don't even care what it's for, bro. <laughs> you my guy. If you need four and a half for rubber ducks, whatever it is. Like I take it. You, you clearly have the information with this theft story. <laughs> so." yeah that came out quickly no it was a theft and then of what like they they didn't even say it was like of the money they just said thievery is a foot i was like would, and would he be in be jail coming. and not on espn right now if he stole right. 4.5 million dollars from yeah he gave a speech to the dodgers team in korea next to otani so that's where it's like all right clearly there wasn't a theft if they're still pals I mean, again maybe otani just a nice guy or a complete idiot <laughs> Yeah, I'm leaning bozo. I'm leaning <laughs> towards the bozo accusations. I don't I don't know that he's gonna beat that. Best friend in the world or stupidest person in the, on the planet. Maybe they're one yeah, in, what if it's, think, maybe it's one and the same. The old stigma about athletes in general, it really didn't have anything to do with race, even though it got amped up for certain ones, but the athletic stigma in general is big fucking moron. We've gotten away with that, and uh, or for, away from that in certain regards. It still gets applied to plenty of people, but I don't know that Shohei was ever going to face those allegations. If he popped up, that was the funny part too. They were interviewing old Angels teammates, like what kind of guy was he? And they were like, "Ah, oh, Shohei didn't even know other sports existed. This, that, and the third. Like, given all these details, uh, they didn't. Even, his own teammates didn't even know he got fucking married. Like, obviously, they weren't that close." Nobody knew his dog name till he told us, man. So he keeping it uh, right, pretty close to vest. But he also was just 
on every sport but baseball. The translator's like, no, no, they tell us that every year. <laughs> no baseball. I tried. I, I really, no, really. I did, but I was gonna, if we're, if we're being frank, if it's all above board now. <laughs> now, I'm uh, trust me, I'm hammering the <laughs> hires for, for the Dodgers this year. I've got some intel you wouldn't believe. But yeah, worst, like he, the, my, the funniest part was he was like, I had never hit a single bet. I was so bad. <laughs> Relatable. Been there. Yeah, every time Ipe speaks, I'm like, the, I'm glad he's doing it because it's very entertaining for me. I don't know why no one's put a stop to him speaking at all. <laughs> this is like, this is the, like, it, it's serious because it gets to like athlete integrity and, and betting. Like, the, like legit integrity of the game. The whole reason anybody watches is because they think this shit is on the level. Once you lose that, people are going to be out. But this is, like, the highest stakes, lowest stakes shit because it's still very funny to laugh. Like, there's no, like, lives ruined. Or, yeah, I, I guess I should – because we don't know what's going to come out soon. So, with the information that True. we have so far, it's like a guy that's just signed for $700 million, gave his friend four and a half, and then they was like, no, nah, actually, he stole it. Because he was betting on <laughs> not baseball. And we believe him because we know him to be a trustworthy figure, right? <laughs> we keep letting him speak because the people know, uh, is it Ipe? I believe Ipe. so, yeah. We know and That's believe him to be it. a trustworthy figure, right? Let him talk more. Because now he's going to have to do a response to Otani's. They're going to be sitting next to him and Buster Olney on ESPN. Now, what what did you see there? He's like, I, I got to say, it's a crock of shit, Buster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was up to his eyeballs and, and Mexican cockroach fighting. <laughs> I seen it. I seen it with these. I can show y'all. I, I can show y'all some action that would, that would blow your doors off. <laughs> and they bring in Steve A. Smith and Molly Kier. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's it is interesting. Like LeBron, obviously, very publicly has a deal. Uh, for gambling specifically. And obviously he's only talking about the NFL. I don't think he's giving out picks for anything else. But, yeah, it would be weird if Shohei was just like this huge gambler. And uh, him, th- them being like gambling, he it, the idea of it detests him. It's like, now you're doing too much. Now I believe he's been gam- big gambling. I don't even care if it's on... Like, I don't, I don't care if he's gambling, right. but the way they're handling it, it's like, yeah, maybe he was. <laughs> the funniest is not people are going back seeing any game he stunk as a pitcher <laughs> and hitter. And it was like, the Tigers, man, you should have been chefing them up. They fucking stunk. Well, we clearly threw this game. Nine innings, no hit ball, and four for four, four dingers. This guy's selling. <laughs> yeah, so he was just betting uh, on the Angels. He was like, I'm on the team. We're going to win some of these games. No, no, you're not. Actually, <laughs> not, I fear. No, that's why I say, like, it's <laughs> the it's somewhat stakes, but it's low stakes. But we're going to get a high stakes, high stakes one just with the way. That's just how this is going to. That's not me wishing this. That's no. not me, like, doom and glooming. It just feels like, like, y'all know how often they people used to shave points and there used to be a scandal like this every two years college i feel like college basketball a lot pro baseball the ones people know about and now you can log on to your jason tatum league pass and put some action right right then and there like for me who grew up where gambling was i I should say tab not a bad word but it was definitely taboo to be spoken about openly and now it it couldn't be any more open. Like, if you legit just wanted to watch the game, or watch the NBA game, I don't know how you could without seeing the live stuff. Like, it feels like there's no option for people. And no, I understand that we both have this sign in the background. About, like, I get, this is not me trying to be, <laughs> yeah, uh, ignorant to that. But that's why I say, it's for the game. It's not, uh, it's, it just feels like the game now. You have to seek us out. You know what I mean? You have to find us. Right. We're not blasting on tv and that's not an excuse i have no moral qualms with what we do that's what I'm i don't think gambling is uh, bad but the way it's being no like, they just turned it forced, on yeah. it's not like the the, the faucet was completely off and like famously off like they talked about how off the faucet <laughs> was and they didn't like it's like turning your hose outside back on after winter like you can't just crank it to full blast 
after it's been like with ice and shit in it all winter long. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what they did. There was no, oh, what temperature is the pool? Let me stick a toe. The, everyone just started cannonballing off. There were like three states legal, and they were like, "That's we're good. We're good to go." We're right, good. One is always <laughs> like, all... if, if there's one legal, it'll go somewhere else. Right. And even if it don't, we'll just be Nevada. Like, what was it? It was what Nevada and Jersey for ever like weren't those like the east coast and west coast places where you could do that type of stuff that type of stuff gambling legally (laughs) like again for just my again i was in the south it just wasn't really a thing like that openly i should say openly oh i mean massachusetts is so fucking puritanical laws like that i'm shocked they even turned the sports sports books on i saw how they dragged their feet with uh legalizing cannabis right. and how long they held that up and stole money from people the state still stole money from people for years i was shocked how quickly the gambling spout got turned on just because that's the type of like they you still can't really buy alcohol on sundays in massachusetts but they were like yep gambling bring it on in it's like I, you can get it on sunday here i think it's after the last church bell rings Sounds so right. i can pull up to literally a jack daniel sponsored uh driving or a parking spot outside the liquor store, but I gotta wait till like twelve eighteen. Yeah, I think it's after twelve in mass, and then like most holidays, you just can't get it. Like Fourth of July, you better have that shit purchased by mm-hmm. the third because it will not be available on the fourth. But gambling, they were like, "Come on in." Um, so that's where it was like it's existed over in Europe for so long that it's just part of the culture. It's like drinking over there too. Like they just understand it a little bit better like, yeah, and americans have every to... definitely under, sex gambling drug all that they have <laughs> it's much less taboo so it's not so oh my god where you have to go back alley to get it because it's been made so frowned upon right yeah it, the the it's both the shame here that's associated with certain things and the overindulgence we also have as part. So, like, once it is on, it's like, well, we're going to do it to the max. There's no, like, lightly stepping into it. And that's where, yeah, like you said, I don't see... Oh, that's almost pa- also why I don't think it registers 13, 14 years from now when he is on the ballot. Mm. Because there will be 10 larger, yeah. like, got his way larger way early. scandals. Yeah. yeah, early and at this point it doesn't look like it's even going to, he's going to beat the charges. Like, I think it's going to stick on the fall guy. Whether or not that that's the truth is irrelevant. That, that's what the story will be. He can't have, like, anything else. Because if, if literally, no. if something happened in seven years different, it'd be like, oh, well, you know he's always had that that itch. So he'll have right. to keep it clean. But no, I do think you're, like, so much, like, again, like a big, probably something, like, legit big will happen to where this is just a footnote of a footnote. It'll be on like the the list of hey you remember what uh, ten times all time great athletes in their sport got busted for uh, Garrett. Here's Iverson walking out uh, before game one. Here's Jordan at the casino. Otani at, at Cantaloupe's uh, uh, Cantaloupe's Wildcats basketball D two basketball <laughs> the semifinals uh sweating yeah profusely. just mopping brow but yeah like you said i guess as it came i thought it would be a progression and i get maybe that's what scares me like if the hose is on 100 right now and i thought it'd be progression what happened when they kick it up to a thousand like you know what i'm saying like we still yeah. might be in level one it, with how much it's oh, thrown sure. like there's this is the rollout so yeah. I, I i don't i, I, mean, I don't know where it goes honestly to your point about how taboo it was like not even that long ago i remember last year at the super bowl we were talking about kind of like how the broadcasts have embraced it so Mm -hmm. much and i was like yeah that's why i mean it used to be so hard to even try and talk about it that's why um chris berman Mm -hmm. gives those fucked up scores because it was his way to talk about the spread without talking about the spread michaels and well, Al Michaels was always just like, I've got the Patriots. Yeah. <laughs> just say, Al, put your hand down. I got four. I got four. I got about four. But, but Berm would give scores that like weren't even uh, attainable. He was like, I got a two to one uh, Jets over the Bills. Two to one, yeah, I said. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I said that Josh Norris was like, I had no idea. That's that's how effective 100%. it was. You know, yeah. Norris was, you know what I mean? That Like, you had to either know scumbags or be a scumbag yourself to, to pick up the lingo. Whereas people who were just watching sports was like, huh, that would be a peculiar, wacky game. <laughs> he was in Bi- if he was raised in Carolina, he was in Bible Belt like I was. So we was all just like, uh, True. Berms being Chris, Chris Berms, we were just saying some funny numbers. Three and a half. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> a push? Push what? Like, it just completely, but it, I don't know. Maybe that's the nostalgia. It's like that felt like the sweet spot where if you wanted it, you knew exactly where to get. Right. And if you didn't want it, you could be like, well, what's that about? That feels like the perfect level of any, right. if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, don't worry about it. It's like, okay, now you right. can't be like, don't worry about it. Well, the, there was just no finesse with the introduction to it. It was just, it was like people you can tell have never bet now talking about it, myself included, uh, <laughs> talking about it in a way that was just like so forced. Um I don't know when when Burnt when and a, he's like an all time, uh, every TV yeah. personality regardless. Yeah. So, but it's just like he has more finesse talking about anything that that anyone will be talking about. So it is for sure different there. But yeah, we're there's no going back. I, I fear. This no, the ship is, has sailed. What it Whatever is it, we have, the ship has sailed. We're all on the boat. Some whether you walked onto the boat, we are all on the boat. We will see where it ends. Yeah, I willingly jumped on because again, I have no problem with it. Most laws I'm against, so yeah, this one in particular. This one I was. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. Uh, the draft. The draft is. This is my least favorite stretch of (laughs) draft season. All the takes have already happened, so now it's just smoke screens and speculation hour for the next month. That's when I turn. That's when I come alive. The draft gets farther away every year. It's 4th of July <laughs> next year, I think. It's so fucking Labor Day. far away. And now it's who's going to who's gonna win this Vikings sweepstakes? Uh, like, it seems like the Vikings are... It's like, no, we're doing you a favor trading you these picks. Two, three, four, or five. Like, they just want to be in that top five. I think because they want McCarthy, and they don't think anyone in the top three is taking McCarthy. That's how my read on it, at least. What if somebody's buying the McCarthy? Like, again, this is like Harbaugh saying J.D. McCarthy's the best human being he's ever known. He's got the arm touched by God. His pro day was should have on pay-per-view. What if the Patriots are like, J.J. McCarthy, huh? I don't think so. I mean, Gerard Mayo keeps being like, I really kind of fucking hate these quarterbacks. Um, it's It went from two weeks ago the narrative was like the Patriots are locked in on a quarterback. They will not trade it to Gerard Mayo openly being like, it is for sale. Um, So that's a pretty big swing. And when I think about how the Vikings have moved and before I I throw this out there, yeah, obviously I want this to happen because I'm a Patriots fan, but I think it makes a little bit of sense. So shut up person who can't, I can't even hear their response. Um, I'll be the judge of this sense business. Yeah, no, I, and I, you're going to hate it, but (laughs) They traded for 23, so they have 11 and 23. I don't think, and this is also the offseason, this is where I'm going to lose you, they can sign Justin Jefferson to an extension. He's going into year five. This is also the team that acquired Justin Jefferson by trading Stephon Diggs to get the pick. They've already done this. I think he would already be signed by now if he was going to get signed by the Vikings. They just took Addison last year. I'm sure they feel quite confident in their receiver evaluation skills. This draft in particular is loaded with players. Obviously, they might, they're they not all going to hit, but people are very high on this draft class. As high as they were five years ago on the Justin Jefferson draft class. Last year, to get the number one overall pick, the Panthers traded up from nine to one using a top flight receiver instead of a pick. I don't think they're going to trade 11 and 23 to get up there. I think the Patriots are trying to get Jefferson in 23. You keep 11. Fucking keep it. Give us Justin Jefferson. They just tried to get Calvin Ridley. They mm-hmm. they drew a line in the stand at a number, and I don't think he was ever going to come here anyways. If you could trade for Justin Jefferson and make him the highest paid receiver of all time, that will eventually get broken in a year or two, so it doesn't even About matter. two weeks, man. Michael Pittman or right. yeah, whoever just gets signed latest. I don't think that's implausible. And if you're like, hey, you can keep 11 – we can get Penix or whoever the fuck we want at 23. 
we get Justin Jefferson, pay him. I don't hate that plan at all. Obviously, I don't hate it because I'm a Patriots Wait, I bet fan, you but... don't. I, I get, it just has to decide, or you have to decide what the Justin Jefferson long-term plan. Because if I'm if I'm the Vikings, and if I am like we're so far away, I don't want to get my – like if we're that far away, I don't want to get my – like I'm not trading Justin Jefferson to get a quarterback that's not going to be throwing to Justin Jefferson. That's where I think they traded for Hawkinson – who they like, they feed a ton of uh, targets to, and they just had Addison, and they watched Addison ball without Jefferson mm-hmm. as he missed time last year. So that's where I think they're sitting there like, why would we pay Justin Jefferson? Obviously, we're getting uh, this quarterback on the cheap. But if we think Odunzie could be there at 11, or if we think Brian Thomas Jr. can just be that X receiver for us, or, or Y receiver for us, and Addison could be the X, doesn't matter really. If we think that can work as well, now we've got the whole offense cheap, except for Hawkinson somehow. But now we can really do whatever, take whatever swings we want in free agency for the next couple of years. That's where it makes some sense to me. Now, you're trading Justin Jefferson. I'll say, yeah, again, that's things. where um, <laughs> it just keeps coming back to that for me. But if he's saying, I just don't want to be here, I'm not going to sign here no matter what the cost, then I think it makes it a little easier for you to be like, all right, then we're trading you. I guess the case would be, like if I am trading Jefferson and I put it, I, maybe I don't get a pick as high as three, but could I do better than two first, even knowing that you have to pay him soon just because if he is essentially choosing you, could you, like, you would have, so Vikings would have three and 23 still? No, three and, three 11. and 11. I think, they, and I think, Je- I think Jefferson's three. that good. And I understand DJ Moore a year ago went for the equivalent of a first or a number one pick. That was also to get to number one. This is to get to number three. So there is less value there, even if the Vikings think JJ McCarthy, Jaden Daniels, whoever is the best quarterback. There's just less value there. I think if if you're telling them, we'll take 23, you can keep 11, because that kind of gives them their pick of at least. Like, not the top three receivers. I think they're all gone by then. But if they have. Uh, BTJ or somewhat Keon Coleman. I don't think he's going to go that high, but just for an example, if they have one of those guys ranked ahead of Odunzie or Neighbors or whoever, they might feel like they're getting, yeah, we're getting our top quarterback and the top receiver in our eyes. I don't think it's a terrible sell. The only thing I, I know, like their GM now is not the one that drafted or traded Stefan Diggs. I think he's just been there like two, like sure. a year. Two. No, he drafted Addison. Yeah, so th- so last year was his first draft, I'm guessing. So this is you. I believe. I, so. I know he's relatively I believe it's two. new. That would just yeah. I've just seen enough to where on the chart, like every chart I've seen is like 11 and 23 is more than enough points wise to get up to like two, three, four, five, and it's like I. Be- it's it's equivalent. It's equivalent to four. Number four. That's what's like I see. The, the I see that. Yeah, I see the numbers on the chart, but it was like it's four quarterback i don't know for the fourth best quarterback in the class i might would rather have 11 and 23 personally and if i'm the vikings agreed like i saw it was the case that they trade 11 and 23 to the chargers for five and then they kind of played out but they could go from five up to three with a 2026 first so not next year's first but the following year's first and i said why would why wouldn't they just offer that to new england off there right. like no players involved three or excuse me 11 23 and the future first to jump up to three why do we need the charges at all unless you're trying to somewhat yeah, I guess it would, well it's it would I, at that point it would be would the patriots rather have five or 11 that's what it sounds yeah, like yeah if you're getting you know 23 I mean? and maybe some maybe a future middle round pick or something like that anyway but then i want depend on what yeah, they I, would if we don't know who's Washington is taking yet, like we don't know if it's May or Daniels, I feel like I've heard both. Are they in love? Like, would would Minnesota go up to two? It's like we moving up. Let's make sure we're getting like let's not settle for any non Caleb division. Let's just get May or Daniels or whoever your guy. Why do we have to set, settle for QB four? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people have uh, uh, JJ as QB three like a lot of teams or higher, like three at the floor. I don't know. I, With who being Jayden four? Daniels. May or Daniels? 
Daniels. No, I, 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 this is where I think it's smokescreen season. Jane, uh, uh, Drake May has been QB two for a year now. And the, the month leading up to the draft, people are picking at him. I think the Patriots would glad, I think they're kind of Drake May or bust mode right now. If, that's why I think no trades happen. I think they'll either trade down with Minnesota at when May goes to, or take Drake May. I don't think they're going to take anyone else. There. Or if they trade back and get two picks, they'll take a flyer on like Penix or someone like that in like at either 23 or 34, I think they have. That's where I think they would take just a look at a guy, mm-hmm. get him in there for a year, see if he can be the guy next year. But I don't, I think the Daniels thing, I don't know that the league's that in love with him, just based on all the talk that's been happening. I don't know that he is locked into QB3. Now, I also thought Richardson was falling last year, and that turned out to be super That's wrong. why I love smoke so screen like season, baby. <laughs> right. So it's not like I have any real idea, but I would be shocked if Washington did anything other than take Drake May, like genuinely sh- Or whoever took the number whoever, two yeah, quarterback. Second. The one I was thinking that, like I, for the longest time, I thought Arizona was in like the best spot. I kind of think it's the Chargers now. Especially if it like if, if the McCarthy hype is real, like I do think the top three picks will be quarterbacks. But if it's seeming like the fourth is, are they just gonna walk into MH two? Like if Arizona's like we're willing to take stuff to go back from four, and it's just gonna go QB 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 QB. Are the Chargers just gonna walk into Marvin Harrison the second or anybody that's willing to oh. trade up? Because I've seen some cases where Arizona trades back but then jumps up. I saw what they traded with. Like down to eleven, yeah. but went up to eight with Atlanta to get Odunzi, and the Falcons still got Dallas Turner at eleven. So I was like, I kind of like that for right. everybody. But I just wonder if it's going to yeah, go like the Dolphins. Yeah, the Dolphins when they got Waddle. Yeah, jump back and then throw a mid round or whatever, or whatever you got picks to get back up to get one of your guys. And meanwhile, the Chargers just walk right in to Justin Herbert to Marvin Harrison. Listen, the the Chargers, they may have new people running the team at every level. They're still the Chargers. When faced with a a choice like this, I have no doubt they'll make the wrong decision. Neighbors? No. Well, that's the thing. I don't know know that Neighbors is bad. That's the other smaller conversation that started sizzling. Is MH2 even the real wide receiver one, or should it be Neighbors? I thought that was going to happen earlier, honestly. I, I was shocked at how late that conversation came. Uh, MH2. I mean, we've. I remember the the Judy and CD Lamb draft, which I believe was also the Justin Jefferson draft. We were, we spent that whole year being. We were both big Jerry Judy guys. Doesn't always pan out. No. <laughs> we draw it up. Hey, big money from the Browns, uh, so maybe it did pan out for a, for uh, old Double J. But we were also both very high on on CD Lamb, and I remember very distinctly we were doing a live stream. Uh, shout out Trey Zingas asked us, um, could Henry Ruggs be a good value play to be the first wide receiver taken? And we were both just like, ah, the other guy's just so good. I understand he has the speed. I don't, I don't see it. And then he was the fucking first wide receiver taken. So until the draft rolls around, you have no idea what these teams are going to do. Most of them are run by morons. So who's six giant? Giants just walking to MA? Yeah. MH2's become so, I, he's, it's boring. Like he's legit. It reminds me of Trevor Lawrence. Like, he's such a lock as a prospect. I don't even know his strengths and weaknesses. Because it's just like he's generational. He's tall. He's good. Like, which I, I, I trust that. But I'd still like to know what's he got to get better at. Even if he's great, nobody's uh, perfect. Like, what's... The one thing I've seen people question is his separation. Like, does he separate enough? Out. No. <laughs> it catches too many passes for Withers. I <laughs> listen. If it's if it's separation of hands, man, I need you to be able to separate because he's what six five, six four, six five. He's he's six four, six four, six four. And I've seen some people being like, "Well, why isn't he working out? Why doesn't he go to the pro day?" It's like because he knows he's yeah. going no lower than five. Like he's not too worried about it's no- it. It's like he know he's going no lower than five, and he know he's not going like one, two, or three. So, or one, one or two, right. I'd say. Great, stranger yeah, things have happened. Yeah. I won't completely rule us out to take a wide receiver there. I just think the sensible thing to do if you're going to take a wide receiver is just tr- trade, trade out of there so fast. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't hate if we took MH two there, but it does feel like 
we're leaving a lot of value. On like, the board. That's where it's like I got to get a good pick. But if I know no, like if I know people are valuing a quarterback here, it don't even matter who. Whether it's McCarthy, Daniel, it may fall right. something. It don't even matter. People value this this way. If I know for certain, I can move back a little bit and still get by. Well, guy. that's where if. If Minnesota does the sensible thing, they keep and pay Justin Jefferson, and then they just trade their picks to get up to three. I think if they go up there and get McCarthy at three, at 11, I think Jaden Daniels will be there. I don't know. Like, the Giants will not take him. (laughs) The Giants are not taking him. I don't know. I feel like I've heard. Well, they like McCarthy, though, right? I feel like I've seen them attack. Yeah, I don't. You know, true anything is. I'm looking. Okay, so four is Cardinals. They're not taking a quarterback. The Chargers are not. Giants, I could see taking a quarterback. Titan, I mean, how much do they love Billy Levitt? Like, I'd go Joe Walt. We'll talk a little Titans who made no ball. We sure will. Shockingly. Yeah, Titans, the Falcons aren't taking a quarterback. The Bears just got theirs. The Jets just got theirs. Vikings at 11. Yeah, maybe he is just, or maybe you don't have to go up as much. Like, you hear an inkling that somebody might, and it's like, okay, we'll go up from 11 to eight to get him versus 11 to three. Or well, that's where I, I think, I think the Vikings are locked in on McCarthy. So if they trade up, it's more the Patriots. If you do like Jaden Daniels and you think you can get him even by trading back and wait now, people around here will be very annoying about it. Why not just take him at three? If you love him so much, that's not the point at all. If you can get him and then whoever you want at 23, you know, it's just an extra pick. That would give us three picks. I'm just very excited, entranced by the idea that you could have three picks in the top 34. 11, 23, 34 is, you can do a lot with that. And while everyone agrees we have multiple holes, no one seems to care about the multitude of these holes. Though all the Patriots have said this whole process is like, yeah, if we take a quarterback at three, he's sitting for the year. Like, no matter who it is. Yeah. So why would that be any different at 11? Brissett's on uh, one year? Yeah. Yeah, because it's a thing, like, looking hindsight, of course, but, and I know we talked about it, but, like, if the Panthers didn't trade up for one, where would he have went? Who else was going to be, like, we love, because it seemed like everybody else loved their, like, Levis was not going in the first round. Texans love CJ. Colts love Richardson. Who else was going to be, like, we love Bryce Young enough to pay 150 cents on the dollar? Definitely some hindsight 2020, but also... This is what we're trying to do now. Like, what did we learn from last year? It's like, okay, if he doesn't go there, right. how many spots, like, who? Like, at that point, if he's still on the clock at, like, 10, that's where, as I look, I, Raiders, I'd be, sure. Raiders, I'd be looking at some Jaden Daniels. Um, Steelers, Steelers just like, man, let's just batten down the hatches, buddy. Trey, let's just have three quarterbacks. Where, where's Denver? Denver is 12. So they're right at this. So okay. they, so he might fall to them too, you know? They so. can move up. Well, that's where it's like, can we stay at 11 or are they going to trade up to nine? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because Sean Payton's been talking about him wanting to move up. And again, I extend a very similar offer to you, sir. If you want to sub out a first round pick and add in PS2 instead, I would love that <laughs> personally. You'll have to pay him one day. I, I think that's what I've I'm learned. I, I'm <laughs> surprised to learn about NFL fans. They're like, hey, man, if this guy's good, you're going to have to pay him. Like, even over the turn in 30, they're like, listen, man, but Justin Jefferson is going to cost $150 million. Yes, he is. That's how, generally how this goes. Underpaid. I He will be in two months <laughs> when nine other people sign so well it's like you see like the chiefs just opened up 18 million dollars and they obviously lost a very talented quarter cornerback to do so but they could do so much with 18 million. like that's especially when you're a better team 18 million dollars just stretches more that's why i wasn't people right now are upset at the patriots because they didn't have an active off season in terms of signing new people and while i understand and share some of the frustration like we're in, we're not the Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, Patriots right now, where we have Hall of Famers taking one year Haircut, minimum deals yeah. to come play here. Yeah, like, like whole head shaved to come play here. Not uh, scout. This is very capitated to yeah. to come there. We're in the spot now where we have to pay Calvin Ridley thirty million dollars over market mm-hmm. value. You got to pay one hundred twenty cents on the dollar now. Yeah. Yeah, which like. If, if a player is good enough, I truly believe there's no such thing as overpaying for them. 
Calvin Ridley's a really good receiver. And the Titans already had a really good receiver, which makes it easier for them. We don't have that first part yet. Shout out to Kendrick Bourne. Love you. You're not quite DeAndre Hopkins, even though you've been much nicer to me in the past than DeAndre Hopkins has. <laughs> but... <laughs> Thus far. <laughs> yeah, to... Until, up to this point in time, we'll see what the future holds. Um, that's where it's like, I don't hate that the Patriots missed out on him. What I do hate is the Patriots missed out on him and had zero plan B, not even at receiver. Just, just no plan B, yeah. They didn't, they didn't go after Sneed, which I think would have made a lot of sense. They were talking about, like, that was a record-setting contract. It was $75 million. Like, that's <laughs> nothing. Over what, like four years for a guy that I think is 26, maybe 27? Yeah, and I guess some people were worried about one of his knees. Is it degenerative? Is it ever going to get better? I, listen, for two, the next two years, knock on wood, I'm fairly confident he's going to be pretty good. And if he, that's the guy pretty good opposite Christian Gonzalez, and all you have to trade is a, next year's third, I think I would have done that. I Personally, I would have done that, no problem. Well, this is where, like the 18, one, it's 18 million for the Chiefs, which is, a different type of pie for everybody else because people will take less. It's also 18 million post free agency, big free right. agency. So it's like this is where we see the now you can get some duds too. Like somebody will sign a one year deal and it won't work out, but you can get some steals too because somebody either missed the boat or misjudged the market or was waiting for this. In, like I would like a one year deal to right. play with the Chiefs, rehab my value, and then hit it next year. Another thing, I someone's gonna get cut. Yeah, like that's generally how this goes because i thought i was like why would they if i was the chief is why i'm a big dumb dumb and i'm not the chief i was like if i knew i'm not paying him then i franchise him we run one more back try to go for the three peat and then take the comp pick. thank you for the, your service we take the comp pick but they trade him now get the same comp pick third rounder next year the 18 million in cap space and they also did a seventh round swap which for most every other team i would be like who cares but the Chiefs' seventh rounder, Isaiah Pacheco, Jalen Watson, one of the cornerbacks that, not saying that's the whole reason, but they feel good enough about their cornerback room to where they're saying goodbye to Sneed, and Allegretti on the offensive line, oh, yeah. Trey Smith in the sixth. So the Chiefs just getting to move up like 30 picks or whatever at the end of the draft, not nothing. When we look up and it's like, yep, that's where they found their next stud linebacker. That's where they found their next Tyreek or whatever in the sixth seventh so i see why they did it but do the titans know ball it's looking that way i fear uh they have the draft to fuck it up and boy oh boy have they fucked up some drafts uh recently no less uh but it does appear like they know a decent amount of ball they got ridley a year after winning the the hopkins bout or bad uh, bidding <laughs> battle they got Sneed, which they kind of stole him from the Colts, too. Like, the Colts were supposed to trade for Sneed. I don't know what happened there. Just They agreed to, like, the trade, but not the contract. I think, I, I I think that that's always what, happened. I heard Colts and I heard Lions. I was like, either way, it's like, any team mentioned, I was like, yeah, no, that feels like a good trade. Yeah. This is great. Uh, they've had a, a really strong offseason. Now it's all up to, A, the draft, but also Billy Levis. Which, again, if they hit the draft right, then, because they're sitting perfect. Like, at the time, the last time we were talking, like, the Titans might be cooking something. I didn't know they had signed a Wouzie as well, the cornerback oh, yeah. from the Bengals. So, I know McCreary had a good year for, so I feel like they're just good on corners right now. Mm -hmm. They're going to be in a perfect position to, like, Joe Alt should just fall to them. And I would just look at, like, the offensive linemen in free, like, I don't know if these guys can play left tackle, but Bakhtiari's still out, still out there looking for a deal. Makai Becton's still out there looking for a deal. So if I get those guys in, can somebody play right tackle if they've decided Skaronsky is, is a guard? They might have Skaronsky penciling in at, at right tackle, whatever. But there's a couple, like, decent offensive linemen. They're, I like the Titans thing. They had guys playing a lot of snaps that some of them were, like, the worst in the league at their position. Like they had, sure. I saw Levis was pressured on forty four percent of his dropbacks. It's like that. Whether you think he's good or bad, you'll never know if your quarterback's <laughs> getting pressured on forty four percent of his dropbacks. So get all in there. Maybe a veteran tackle. Uh, 
like a guard. Then I know like Justin Simmons, Julian Blackman still out there. If you're really trying to work on the secondary, I'd be Jadavian Clowney. I would just get the one year, one great year of Jadavian Clowney that nobody wants to give him more than one year. But I would, I Never. would sign up for that. Get a receive like I saw Josh Reynolds. Can he be my like Traylon Burks pusher? And then I also draft a guy because I also I can't just bet on. He was first round pedigree. He, he'll be in advantageous spots. I can't guarantee he's gonna blow up this year. Not that right. Josh Reynolds. I feel like he's solid enough in a secondary role. He feels very much like a Titans receiver. I can see him very in the colors. Much like a Titans. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big stretch. <laughs> yeah. It's uh the South's weirdly. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna use the word good. I'm not gonna use that. We're not gonna break out the G mm-hmm. word here. But it feels like all four teams, for the first time, what, how old is the South? 21 years? It was 02, yeah, I think it was founded. Old, yeah. That's when the Texans came in, 02. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. so it, for the first time in 21 years, it feels like all four teams, it won't all work, but I don't know that it's any of their faults based on the moves they've made over the last two years. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the Texans hit as well as you can hit in draft. Uh, with Stroud and Anderson, Tank Dell. Um, coach. Coach, yeah, exactly. They finally got, after having like five and four years, they finally <laughs> seem to have nailed that one. Plenty of offseason left for them to fire him, but it doesn't look like it's headed that Ryan's way. out the door, back to the 49ers as <laughs> linebacker coach. I said, mother Just fucker. linebacker. Yeah, just a gray, soon green laws out. Uh, <laughs> it's like, I've still got it. Um, so he's got that going on. The, the Jags had like a down year, which is weird to say for the Jags, but it's true. I don't think that's going to happen again. I think they'll be better uh, next year. By the way, uh, shout out Math Bomb, the inventor of RAS scoring. Mm. Uh, Trayvon Walker, after doing nothing, but because more scores have entered the system, is now officially the most athletic defensive end in NFL history, or to enter the NFL. He was like two before, and whatever happened in the testing his numbers jumped up to one. That's like when they was messing with PR because Russ was cooking, man. I don't trust these. <laughs> I don't trust these numbers. Well, if, as every year, there'll be more athletic people that enter. So right. if like the average for vertical raises and whoever had one before, that was where they, they struggled, but Walker didn't. So that makes his score better. Yeah. Like I, it definitely feels, I was shocked to see it, but no, perfect 10. So they got that going for Is that going to be the Anthony, like nobody's going to top the Anthony Richardson athletic score, right? Will he just be that as we go? It's like, no, he's that most athletic person to ever breathe. I don't know. I also just heard the lawnmower for the first time, which is very the, funny. It ain't even the last, the <laughs> fucking leaf blower. It should be going hard. Uh, it really is. Hey. I thought my computer was like overheating to the point. Like I was over here touching it. Like it's a little warm, but it shouldn't explode. Right, it'd be no leaves <laughs> left, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's no it's that's very i don't care uh, <laughs> the people at home don't care uh i put it in 17 uh, i was gonna say this is the new transition <laughs> listen you asked we heard you serial poor transition out where there's leaf blower guy <laughs> Caitlin Clark, man, we're like we're really we're let's really to <laughs> and the pelicans i'll tell you another thing <laughs> that Herb Jones, man. Woo. But the Titans, they have a second year quarterback. And what do you know? They're giving him as many tools as fucking possible to see if it was his fault or if actually there's something there. And if not, now they're in a decent position next year. Now we can trade some draft uh, capital to move up if need be because we have the rest of the team kind of already figured out. Like we can now just focus on this one position. Everyone who keeps yelling at me for wanting to take defensive players. It's like, yeah, let's get some more defenders. Let's get some wide receivers. And then next year, we look like a pretty... Right now, we don't look attractive at fucking all. You can make it attractive without getting the quarterback first, is more my point. And the Titans took a swing on somebody. They're making it attractive either for their young guy to take that next step, or if it doesn't work, it was a second-round pick, really no harm, no foul. They just move on, find someone else. That boy on my door now. Hey, that shit lies. That's why I <laughs> muted it. Uh, I think the mute made it worse because when you came back, it was just quiet to much louder. Blaring, but yeah, he's... Uh, 
No, I like this is the, the whole point. Like you can't if you put a quarterback, I mean, most importantly a quarterback, but any young player in a position. I know you can't even hear what I'm saying right now, but <laughs> any, <laughs> no, but like isn't that that's the whole point? Like the entire point is like okay, if we put him in this position and he fails, is there something salvageable? Like, is it worth it another year? If it's not. Let's move on. Either way, we should have our last two picks project to be like on our offensive line. We had like we've locked up our secondary for the foreseeable future. Was Jeffrey Simmons? I think he's locked up. Like, I believe yeah, so. like get some more pass rushing help. I think they lost a couple defensive guys, but like they have picks. They've still got money to spend. Like they're not all the way yeah. out. And so it's like let's just see. Like Billy, G, he might look decent enough to where it's like okay. We don't love, like I've already seen the quarterback talk for the 2025 draft. Not great. There's still a whole lot of time left. Somebody could definitely emerge, like we said. But if it's like, let's just see. He's cheap for three more years. Like, we don't, don't really have to do anything until it's time to make a money decision. Right. Outside that, he could be a right. backer. And he makes minimum wage, NFL speaking. So there's no rush. Build the rest. That's why I, I've just never got that we have to get the quarterback first. It's like, I don't think you do. There's one, that's one way to do it. And if it's the right guy, you probably should. But even, like, the Chiefs were built when Mahomes got there. Now, he took them to a yeah, new level. Built. But they won, what, 10, 11 games, in, like, multiple, four or five years in yeah. a row. And he got to sit. And he stepped in and took it to the next level. It doesn't have to be, yeah, we get I, this guy. You figure, you might get a Joe Burrow, but you might get a lot. of There's a lot of non-Joe Burrows you go through to get to Joe Burrow. Take it from me. And Tennessee, ever since Peyton left the Colts, I feel like any time a free agent quarterback or, or one who's demanding a trade pops up, they always get lumped in. And obviously Peyton went to college in Tennessee. That was the tie-in there. But Tennessee in general, I feel like it's a warmer weather place. Uh, it's not, it is the South, but it's not. You know, it's kind of the middle of the country. Uh, it's, it is the South. I want that clear. But right. it, Geographically it's not speaking, not side, really. Yeah. yeah, sure. So that's where it's like, if they just have it built, even if they don't love the quarterback class, you never know who's just going to want out. Maybe Arizona's done with Kyler. You know what I mean? You don't know what you're going to fall into. So that's where it's like, yeah, just have everything ready and be in a pe- – don't just rely – there's only so many places who can rely on uh, geographic location, like Miami, LA. LA. Yeah places like that like there's there's like three of those max like those players want to go to a team where they think they can be the one to win with like i yeah i just have to i i can just turn the key like the house is built i'm i just need to live there like when when brady left and he Mm -hmm. was like yeah tampa looks pretty ready to go i'll go there stafford to the rams right like that's the yeah you build everything and then like you try it with your guy and it's like okay hey jared goff was good we need a little bit extra Jameis did numbers. We need a little bit extra. We'll see what Levis does. If not, you just wait. You just get the next guy. But there's no, I don't know. It's just, I'm just thinking now, if Washington just takes Drake May 2nd, and it's like, we've got our guy now. Now, like, he'll get to figure it out alongside the rest of the team. Caleb Williams. We have such a rich history of developing quarterbacks here that, We'll just leave you to it. It'll probably be fine. So, yeah, I'm build the other stuff. Again, there's still moves they can make. Like Lakin Thomas, I saw like Charles Little, guys that were starters last year. Not saying they're going to step in and be all pro, but you didn't have NFL right. caliber production on right. your offensive line. Right. If you go from the, the 60th out of 60th best PFF guy to the 34th, that's an upgrade. Everybody's not going to be – top five, but Alt might be, Skaronsky might be. You, if you can get a couple of those top guys, fill it in. You got two running backs as well. You got, you got a good running back room. You got a good receiver mm-hmm. room. They could probably use a, like another tight end or another pass catcher in the draft or free agency, wide receiver or tight end. Sure. And go from there. Yeah, again, I'd, Justin Simmons still out there, or Julian Blackman, the safe, like a young, safe, youngish safety to go with my cornerback core and roll it out. Like you said, if everybody in the AFC South feels like they have a plan. You said the Texans, you said the Jaguars, the Colts, is like AR, it seems like they found their head coach and quarterback in the same offseason. AR have to stay healthy and prove it. 
this year, and the Titans seem like they have a plan. They feel they are the anti NFC South, where it's like everybody here has a team, and I guess there's technically a <laughs> plan. The plan is to give Kirk Cousins and Baker Mayfield combined like two hundred fifty million dollars and trade the farm for Break Young or uh, for uh, Bryce Young and give Derek Carr one hundred fifty million as well. I was yeah, I forgot. Say, the forgot first him. Three yeah. plans, the first three plans are all so much better than the last plan. <laughs> <laughs> and the first three plans are not good. If I told you you had to pick one as your quarterback situation for 2024 and beyond, Derek Carr and you inherit the con- I think it was 4150 something like that, and you inherit the contract. It was a lot. Kirk was, what, 4 one, was it 150 as well? Something like that. Probably. But it starts now. You have to give up everything the Panthers did for Bryce, or you have to give Baker Mayfield $100 million. Kirk was 180. Uh, I think it's I think it's Baker. Uh, I would probably lean Kirk, but coming off the Achilles, I think that's what changes know, it. Like, yeah, it seems like people have figured that out for the most part, and it's not like he was fucking Vic uh, before the Achilles. So, but he's was he 36? 36, something like that. Coming Drake's off the age. Achilles, which is, Imagine Drake coming back from the Achilles to play quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, I think it's I think and I'm not out on Bryce. I just also don't trust what the Panthers are gonna do around him. Which it matters more than the quarterback itself. Some would say. Like the do they get worse this offseason? I don't know that they've gotten better. The Pan No, I would say they spent a lot of money on guards, but they needed offensive line help. Sure. The Deontay Johnson for just a seventh round swap felt like easy. That's yeah, what yeah it felt like yeah, easy okay. money. I okay. take that chance every okay. time. Yeah, um, I like that. I, I was more thinking about the trading of Brian Burns for uh, seventeen cents. Yeah, that <laughs> that's where I felt like they got worse. I, but again, you just if you nail that pick, nobody cares. Like the it's been botched. You could have had the two for, the Rams picks. That's out the door. Sure. He's a giant now. You nail that sec. I've seen McConkey, but if it's a receiver. That is just not Jonathan Mingo. You can you can spin that as a win. Well, it's like I think Mingo will probably look better if they take McConkey and Deontay, two guys who just only get open. Right, like he, a complimentary like, piece. Yeah, yeah, and it's like with an offensive coordinator who has him running routes that he's better at than worse at. <laughs> I think well, I can't remember what eighty nine said. It was either like. He was really good at outbreaking routes, so, and they only had him running in breaking routes. So it was just like, hey, you're you're making him do the worst thing he's Love at. It. Like have him run outside, and he'll be better. So I'm I'm not out on Mingo by any means, especially if it's not like forty year old Adam Thielen's the only other guy out there putting any pressure on the defense. Deontay will be open if they take a wide receiver, which they should. Uh, even in the third round, like there's so many, there's so much talent in this draft. Like as long as they get it, one of these top. I don't know, 20 receivers. I think that's a big step for them. And again, I don't see how many picks they have. I was like, I wouldn't hate multiple. Like, I think, do they have two second rounders? They might. Let's what did they get for Burns? It was the Giants. Yeah, what did the Panthers have? So, the, yeah, the Panthers have 33, 39, and 65. Okay. In, that's not In the first three rounds. So, like, a round, they. I'm just on Tankathon. They've got him getting Lad McConkey first pick of the second round. Keon Coleman goes like right after that. I'm trying to see other receivers in there. Like Troy Franklin's in that range. Xavier Worthy, Roman Wilson, Ricky Pearsall, uh, Baguette from South Carolina, yeah. Jalen Polk. Like you said, just somebody you got to come away with at least one. I was gonna say multiple swings, but I don't know if you can go too. Re- you have too many holes to fill to. Sure do. Uh, to handle <laughs> that, but. AFC South looking up, just words I would never Ever. thought I would thought I would hear. Mm-mm. And it may listen if all four of those teams went combined uh, three and fourteen, they all just beat each other once exactly. <laughs> Titans get the tiebreaker because they're the closest to league offices. <laughs> like that's just the only one. <laughs> Wouldn't shock me in the slightest. They haven't they haven't earned that, but I can see what they're all thinking and i i i understand it i don't think any of them are taking bad swings like you said like the nfc south so that's where i give them a lot of credit 
We've just never seen it before. It was just Peyton dominating for a decade. Uh, and then the Titans would pop up every now and then. The Texans. Jaguars would be in the mix it. every every blue. Just make a conference championship yeah. kind of random. Yeah. Win seven yeah. games. And lose, lose to the Patriots both times. Uh, <laughs> Bledsoe and Brady. Bad luck. Yeah, no, but. tough. Yeah, they timed them poorly. That's what, I, what can I say? Oh, wait, I saw them nowhere. Nowhere <laughs> to be found were those Jags. That was the time to do it. It just, like, NFL, like, you just have to have some kind of plan. Like, there's just, like, NBA, I'm over NBA, might, like, a rebuild could take three to five years minimum. NFL, you just, not necessarily. Like, even if you're right. tearing it down and breaking it back up, just the physical toll, you might get to do it for two years. After that, your coach getting fired. Like, your GM getting fired. You're not getting, <laughs> you're not getting three years to like tear it, even if it's the right move, tear it all the way down. So you got to have some type of plan like, okay, if this works, we're cooking. If Levis works, we're in there. If not, we pivot to whatever next year's quarterback market. I don't know what it looks like free agency wise, but it, there's always somebody. Or if somebody says, I want to go, I'm in the last year of my deal. It's time for me to be extended. It's not working out. You can become one of those places if you did the pre-work. And which seems like they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, must be nice. Um, but I think I think we covered it all. No. Maybe one, not. One more. I'm sure people will yell at us. No, oh, no. Uh, NFL out here changing rules, Mick. Oh, brother, <laughs> thank you. I've, oh, these yeah. These fucking assholes. Oh, no, get them. I, I couldn't let you go without that. Get them. No, I, yeah, I, I I wrote down the list and I didn't write that because I was like, we'll be talking enough NFL. It'll obviously be on the top of my mind. And it those goddamn lovable Titans. Uh, Our Titans. Let me forget. <laughs> the the banning of tackling, they're trying to frame it like they banned the hip drop tack. No, no, they banned tackling today. It's a much bigger deal than anyone's making it out to be. They've banned tackling. They've made it a judgment call for officials. The dumbest people on the planet. <laughs> they do not need more things to judge on the fly. <laughs> no, they like they showed they showed the video someone took at the back of the coaches symposium, whatever the fuck was going on. That's like it, the someone's in the back of the room. Like just put out the video. Like the NFL put NFL communications put out the goddamn video trying to explain what. Oh, it so was. They gonna know who it was. They gonna know where you sitting, buddy boy. Your house is burned down already. Whoever leaked this, trying to be cute. Every tackle they showed was like the most routine tackle I've ever. Like, what else are players supposed to do? And they're doing it under the guise of we care about players' safety. Of course, we're trying to get this dirty, no good scoundrel of a hit out of the league. Change the playing fields. Don't just do it for uh, soccer, like they showed Jerry World today getting the turf ripped up to put grass down because the contracts for soccer are paying for that, not the teams. These cheap ass owners won't pay because of the maintenance of grass. That costs more than just laying down turf and really never having to do anything to it again. It's absurd. If you really cared about injury, you would get to the root of the problem. Not something that's not like this isn't going to prevent anything at all. People are still going to try and make tackles. Players are still going to get hurt because someone tried to make a tackle. This is an absurd thing to change. It's like I've seen that and I'd. I think it was Joe Goodberry was tweeting like examples of because people were saying, yeah, what are guys supposed to do? And it's like, you see a guy, he'll kind of drag his leg before he hits a guy. He's like, the other way you run through a guy, you're going to like give up more yard. Like, just the physics of the way your bodies are moving. So that's what they're asking people to change. But again, we're asking refs to make this only, like, subject. Like, they're all subjective calls for the ref, of course. But this sure. in particular feels like it's just going to have, like, a big game this year is going to have these kind of, was that a hip drop tackle. And it stinks because... Like, on on the worst ones, yeah, Mark Andrews will get hurt. Like, guys get hurt. But like you said, it's they saying this about player safety while they're not changing the field and why we're going to have 22-game season in five years. But this is, about, this is about player safety. You understand. I want Mark Andrews to be healthy for all 26 games of the 2035 <laughs> season. And we're going to have him playing on four continents – with no bye week. I was going to say, yeah. With no bye exactly, week. You're going to go from Brazil to England <laughs> to Germany to Nashville, buddy, in a month. You're playing on turf. They don't even have regulations for the type of turf. So you're not even playing on the same no. type of turf 
I don't even know if that would make a difference. But when the, I found out there's like four different, it, 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 well, you can just, I feel like your spikes, you know, okay, I need this type of spikes. Now, if it's four different type of, ter- you don't know what you're getting. Right. Month to, or a week to week basis. It just seems like another tax on the players more or less because yeah, a guy is stopping momentum tackling uh, as opposed to giving up three more yards. But like Jalen Warren played multiple games last year for free because of how much he was fined. And then they would show what he got fined for. And it was like, oh, his socks weren't high enough. It's just like, what is anyone actually making any of the money from these contracts? Like this is going to result. I think justice. Uh, Mosqueda I was going to bring that up. Like, yeah. Yeah. Do you have it in front of you? The actual mm-hmm. numbers? Cause I don't want to, I don't want it to sound like I'm yeah, no, I wrote these absurd th- jump. 2021, the NFL collected $7 million in fines. 2021 in two years, that was $21 million that tripled in three years. And now we're adding this. And that was when they introduced what the body weight sack, I like think, 21 yeah. around then. And like, that's a subjective call in every game. People are like, that's just a tack. Like he just tackled the man. Well, how else was he supposed to do that? And you've seen some crazy athletes adjust and be able to like barrel roll after they know they've secured the sack. Right. But it's like, I don't, all of this happens so much faster than like the slow-mo replay we get to see at home. It's, not e- if it were easy to tackle people without hurting them, I'm positive that's what the players would do. Right. It's just not the, the nature of the sport. Looks well, like some of those guys can do that in the same way. Be like, yeah, just do what Aaron Donald does off the line. Just do the same thing yeah, on the ground. It's like, if I could do that, I would. You know, I'm not trying to break Mark Andrews' hip. I'm trying to stop him from converting third and eight. Right. And, yeah. and not tear my own ACL on this turf. Me yelling at Nikhil Harry to just be Justin Jefferson. Dude. He's like, what do you think I'm trying to do, dude? Like, what What do you think's going on out here that I'm not doing? Like, of course, that's what I want to do. This is not how it goes. I'm just ready for the study in a couple years where the NFL's like, actually, uh, hip drop tech, like having your hip broken that way, not even that bad for you, for real. <laughs> actually, advantageous. Like, Mark Andrews caught passes after that. It's actually... A good thing because I saw where the NFL PA did like their study, they studied 11 years of grass versus turf. And in 10 of 11 years, there were way more turf injuries. And in one year, it was grass injuries. And the NFL, guess which year they picked to be like, hey, I mean, actually, <laughs> it's actually not that bad. Um, but no, player safety, I, I, I support it all. I look forward to them playing back to like double headers. Guys been playing the Thursday morning, Thursday <laughs> night game on a turf that was pr- times yeah, a turf that was printed on a 3D printer. <laughs> and it'll be fine because we'll all still watch. That's what it that's what it come down to. Oh, of course. And and that's like to their credit, they passed a better challenge system. Uh, as long as you go one for two, you unlock a special third challenge that you can use. Uh, my my thing is like, if, if I'm right three times in a row, why do I get to stop being right? Why why now is it no longer? If you're three, if you're two for three, yeah, you don't get a fourth. I'm okay with. It. Once you're wrong, it should end. If you're wrong the first time, I think you shouldn't even get the other two. So like you you lost the rest your of the year. Pal. If I'm three for three, I'm cooking. I'm calling this game perfectly. I should be able to keep challenging. No, that was the – Jeff Van Gundy was spitting there. It's like, why is this condition – why do I lose rights because you were wrong? That's what this – you called this wrong. And I was like, hey, actually his, his foot didn't go out of bounds. It's like, oh, you know, his foot didn't go out of bounds. You get one more of those. Why? What are you doing? What? <laughs> why? Yeah, we've already slowed these games down enough. Like you can just put timers on the review. Like if you if you're worried about the game dragging, just 30 seconds, you can only watch full speed reviews, no more slow-mo. You can only watch full speed 30 seconds, you make your decision. I saw it only it was for basketball, but I think it could work. And not even time. You get three watches of it. You get to watch it like y'all get okay. to watch it three times. The call is the call. This it had in the Kentucky yeah. game, dude. Like not that not that we were going to get any momentum going, but I was like, I'd be pissed if I was them because they're cooking right now. They stopped to review something 12 minutes game time. Right. The Kentucky game had a 30, like a 32 minute halftime, like actual halftime. I was like, I'd be pissed if I'm the other team. But I, I, I do care about yeah. Aside from all that, 
I care about the game. I care about the players. Yeah, that's, player that's safety. Most player safety is first and foremost. Yeah, we all know that. And we had the hand. Did nobody uh, see the ambulance? We care about player safety. Don't 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 piss me off with this. Remember when the Bills season was on the line and they handed him the ball? <laughs> <laughs> Sean McDermott said, "What would Muhammad Ada do, Damar?" I need you to look deep. Can you look deep for me, son? Yes, go. Yeah. Let's roll then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anything I say here is going to get us uh, arrested. So. Do the sound effect now, oh. Ike. Now. Uh, <laughs> The whole factory. Dump them. Was, Dump them all. The new sound effect is uh, the sound of steel beams melting into each transition. The <laughs> Ike was in his McDermott bag there. Listen. <laughs> we'll see everybody next week. <laughs> Smiling faces.